A pre-owned. Manon. Interesting. Hey, what's up, ecosystem? Car shipping business industry update Q4 2019. Can I do it? I think I can do it. You're going to want to buckle in because it's Tuesday nights live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. Hey, what's going on, you guys? Man, I love that theme song. I hope you like it, too. It's Tuesday nights live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm coming back at you. And, yeah, I changed a couple things. Uh, by the way, let me know how the audio and the video is going. I want to make sure. I really, really like to have a technical difficulty free night tonight. That would be great. Um, so welcome and I appreciate you joining me. Listen, if this is your first time joining me, I want to tell you what's going on. You know that I want you to feel welcome. It is Tuesday nights live on Auto Transport Intel and we're here together and we're buckled in and we're going to talk about a lot of stuff tonight. But before I get to that, we got the hello live chat. I'm going to go into the live chat. If you're in the live chat saying hello, I really appreciate it. You know, let me know where you are, what you think, what you want to learn, what you're talking about, what part of the industry you're in, and uh, what you think of Auto Transport Intel. I'd love to know. We're going to go into the industry news at about the quarter hour. That's where I get like Facebook meme stuff and photos and actual news, opinions, op-eds, criticisms, stuff like that. That'll be cool. We're going to do that. And then we're going to start to go into the information superhighway, which is where I start to set up tonight's topic, which really I'm going to go right into it after the highway gets going. This is a special report. This is the Car Shipping Business Update Q4 2019. This is a big show. This is a very big show, and I'm going to tell you all about why that is. I want you to stick around. And if you're just joining me right now, you're just in time. Um, and I'm going to do that for, I don't know, could be an hour. I'm not sure. This show goes so fast for me and slow for everybody else. But at the hour and a half mark, we're going to have a car shipping business discussion with Aaron and Jesse of ACI Transport. They're going to join us. Also, Ty of CTS Business Coaching. And again, please let me know if you can see me and hear me okay. I think we're good. I, I see. Uh, okay, I, I think we're good. So listen, here's what we're going to do. We're going to hear a quick uh, quick word from Murphy Auto Transport. We're going to go into the live chat. You're going to want to stick around. Are you completely stressed out from all the calls and the contracts and the verification of loads when nobody answers the phone? Call Murphy Auto Dispatch Services today. Murphy Auto Dispatch Services has over 15 years of experience in the transport industry. We are your office while you are on the road. We book, we verify, and we bill out your loads for you. We have an excellent accounting staff and an even better dispatch team. Give us a call today at 417-273-0021. Or if you want to email me, it's murphyautotransport31 at yahoo.com. Give us a call today.
So that is Murphy Auto Transport Services. If you're looking for dispatch and if you got brokering questions, talk to Sue. There's, and you have questions about dispatching, you've heard there's a lot of rumble going on about dispatcher versus broker. That's why I did a show, Are Dispatchers Illegal? And that came up from a couple months before, talking to Hank Seaton, attorney at law. Listen, I appreciate you guys joining the live chat. It is now time to go into the live chat. Los Angeles MGL Auto says, what's up? Hello, man. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, Truckify is with us. What's up, Moozy? Hey, what's up, Jay and Ty? Truckify car hauling app. Superflow in the house. That's right. Um, let's see. Bogey Joe Sen Senior. I, I was reading this. October every year, car shipping goes down. It does. Um, it's seasonal. There's a lot of seasonality. That's a big part of car shipping. In fact, recognizing the seasonality of car shipping is vital to understanding this industry and any transportation logistics industry. You have to know the ups and downs, something else we're going to talk about tonight. But yeah, all trucking in general slows down. That's right. Steadfast Auto Sales, what's up? Steadfast, welcome to the show. Thanks for tuning in. Is this where you find business? Yes, it is, Ty. I know, man, because you're on the phone all day talking about it. Bogey Joe Sooner, without a doubt, 40 million cars being sold yearly. They need to keep moving. Yeah, 40 million. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. But there are some trends, and that's what people are talking about at the conferences. Many new trends, actually. Lots of, lots changing. We're going to talk about it tonight. Seven Seas Transport, what's up? Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, Seven Seas Transport. Thanks for tuning in. Michael Colliday, what's up? What's up, Michael? Carlos Braxton, ACB Logistics in the house. Thanks for tuning in, Carlos. Uh, who else we got in here? He's busy reading. <laughs> hey, what's up, Kimberly? Uh, yes, I'm reading. I'm always reading. Um, but I can only, my attention can only be held in an article for so long. It, was, it used to be 500 words. It might be 200 now. Maybe 300. Trucker Life TV, excited to watch. Thank you, Trucker Life TV. Thank you so much for tuning in. Jeremy Snap, let's roll. What's up, Jeremy? Uh, oh, by the way, happy birthday, Weston. It is my oldest son's birthday tonight, today, all day, 24 hours. Uh, Mark, Superflow Systems in the house. What's up, Mark? TDK Transport, good evening. What's up, TDK? Whoop, Dadas. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, let's see, that's a killer theme song. <laughs> Yeah, the sound is good. Oh, thank goodness. I'm so glad. Thank you for letting me know. I do appreciate it. Uh, if there are any other problems, questions, technical issues, just let me know. I'll try to uh, catch up. Steadfast is in Denver. Wow. Let, how's Denver doing? How, how are you? How's Denver doing? And how are the loads looking coming out of Denver? Denver's tough. Sue, it's, it can be good going in, but tough getting out. What's up, Sue? Hey, thanks for tuning in. Uh, hope for finding cars. Good stuff to show you. Oh, cool, man. I love to see good stuff. That sounds awesome. Jeremy, glad you're not in the Vegas hotel room. <laughs> I know, man. It got really dark. I didn't know how dark it was. I had I couldn't see my other monitor really well. It was that was a tough show. That's and that's another reason why I'm doing the car shipping business update. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it with lighting and sound. John Ganzel, first time watching. Oh, thanks, man. Thank you. Owner, operator, and you dispatch yourself. Good. Very good. Awesome. Um, the next step is brokering. Say what? Yeah, I know. We'll get into that. Um, hey, Mark, what's up? Michael, Jeremy, Joe. What's up, Joe? First time in. Thanks for saying hello, Joe. Thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. No, really. it. You guys, it means a lot. I mean, every view, every live chat, every subscriber, it really does mean a lot. This show would be really hard to do, like, week after week in a vacuum, and why? And I'll tell you what, too, there's so much information here. It's not just this show. Listen, I watch other shows, too. But I think that I think that Auto Transport Intel is something really unique, um, and this is the overall industry. industry. By the way, guess, check this out. If you're a uh, if you're a defragmenter, if you like living in a silo in your separate part of the industry, there's a place. What I'm trying to do is defrag. I'm trying to bring the silos together. That's one of the things I'm doing at Auto Transport Intel. I don't see a lot of that. 
and I don't really understand it. Um, but um, this is a this is a tough industry. Being a carrier is tough, but as a carrier, understanding other parts of the industry that is vital to growing your business, especially now. We're gonna talk about it. And if that upsets you and you want to stay in your silo, dude, you're not even here anyways. What am I talking about? I oh, know. <laughs> okay. Uh, Murphy's moving up in the world. I know. Isn't that amazing? It's awesome, man. Sue's got so much great stuff. So glad to have Sue as a friend of the show. Jay Wilson says, what's up? Hey, what's going on? Uh, a lot of us are running empty out of Florida to the Northeast to grab snowbirds. The rates are horrible. Yeah, and what you know what we can all agree on is that don't take low rates, right? Don't take cheap freight. We all agree on that. But if you think that day after day just eating off the load boards isn't working for you, it's time to, it's time to think outside the box. I know that's hard. I know it's hard. I don't have enough time in the day either. Believe me. Hey, Jay, Mark is from Expensive Luxury Transport in Las Vegas. Dude, it's Exclusive Luxury Transport in Las Vegas. And I missed you. I was there. I was just there. Snowbird season is only good one way. Jay, give you a raise. Each week you get busier. I know. What's up, Gerard? Hey, man, thanks for joining the show. Thanks for joining the show. Thanks for saying hello. Really does mean a lot. Paul Moore, 23 Black. You know what? I didn't play a single machine all week. I swear. Nothing. I didn't spend a dime on gambling. Actually, I didn't feel well. And I still don't feel 100%. So I put all my energy into the show, right? Into networking, into growing. I oh, know, it's crazy. Kayla, what's up, Kayla? Kayla says hello. Very true. I do mostly in clothes, steadfast. Less competition. Good idea. It's all about the niche, man. It is all about the niche. Guess what? It's 813. Industry news is right around the corner. Are you ready? Stick around. Hey guys, Ty, CTS Business Coaching. I connect dealers, auctions, and carriers. If you're a dealer and you're not getting your inventory on the lot in five days ready to sell, you've got a problem. It's called interest. Like I'm telling you something you don't know. Give me a call. I can connect you with an auction and a carrier. and You can get your cars on the lot in five days or less. 417-483-2764. Thanks and have a great day. Hey, have you have a great day too, man. Listen, okay, we're about to go into industry news. That is Ty. He really is available. He'll answer his phone um, and, you know, give him a call. And you can also go to ctsbusinesscoaching.com or you can email Ty. T-Y at ctsbusinesscoaching.com. What's up, Carlos? Thanks for saying hello. Pablo, don't take the cheap loads. It's so true, man. Don't do it. Don't hurt yourself. Uh, let's see here. What do we got here? We've got, this is the car shipping industry business update. I put this together. I've been working on this. Man, I'm telling you, really, there's a lot of stuff to talk about. Now, what gives me the right? Jay, where do you get off? Well, let me tell you something. I have been working really hard on studying what this industry is all about. I don't even work in it anymore. That's crazy. Why would anybody bother with this industry if they weren't working in it? Well, I'll tell you what. I'm a media guy. Somebody's got to do it. And by the way, that's going to buff right out. <laughs> It'll buff right out. I had to start with some kind of meme picture. OEMs, dealers, auctions seemed appropriate. Man, this is what makes car hauling hard. Is one mistake takes a turn. That's another angle. That's the high angle. Thanks, Jay. Really needed two angles of that shot. So don't waste your time and money on the stuff that doesn't make sense. What is this? Arizona, Utah for 200 bucks? Please. Are you serious? Come on, man. It's, oh, it's almost 700 miles. Don't do it. Uh, here, here's a pinball machine for 200 bucks. You're better off hauling a pinball machine. <laughs> Why is that on Central Dispatch? I have no idea. Uh, somebody says, a broker from Florida told us that the customer's husband was serving in the military so we could ship her car for cheaper. 
We did it for 500 bucks. Later, we found out the broker charged two grand. Outrageous. Florida broker, huh? Say it isn't so. Now, I realize, by the way, this is a cheap shot for carriers. It is kind of fun. as a di Dispatchers and carriers, they know what I mean. But you know what? I have met, you're not going to believe it, I've actually met some cool brokers in Florida. I know. Crazy, right? We're going to get to that. Uh, okay, Bobby says this. Now, this is this is a big read. Um, really, this is. I'm going to let you read. I'm not going to, I'm just going to summarize. You see this a lot. You'll see guys, men and women, folks, company owners, owner-operators, really are trying to help share good information. There's a lot of that, actually. Listen, if you want good information from a driver, an owner, you can find that in many places. And you want to listen. Think about your cost per mile, your expenses, equipment. Research it before you jump in, before you flip your trailer and I show two angles of it on Auto Transport Intel. Realize that there are problems in every direction, but think about how are you going to make money in this business. And by the way, do you have to be a driver to make money? I know. This is why so many carriers get upset at brokers. We're going to talk about that. Let's see here. We lost that image. Oh, yeah. Hey, you guys have heard this, right? Right? Somebody, somebody famous was talking about this. I'll tell you why I got a new one. Be broker. That's J Jay, that's just plain crazy talk. Is it? Is it? Because you might win an award. Listen, what I'm saying is this is silly. What I'm saying is you we get we get questions. And you know what? Maybe some people should be brokers. Maybe carrier brokers. Some folks should definitely just be carriers. My point is is that if you are staring at the load board every day and you're thinking, you're just praying these rates go up. Oh, please, every day rates go up and they don't go up. Maybe it's time to change. Maybe it's time to change up your business model. I know that's a crazy thing to say. Maybe. Maybe you be a carrier and a broker. Maybe do a little more social media. I know. Crazy, right? Social media? How do you think the biggest companies make so much money? One truck, one driver, only drive every load, stare at load boards all day? Nope. Nope. They network. They build a business. They build a book of business and they keep building it. They market themselves. They advertise, right? Huh? Advertise. List your services. Keep reformulating. I know right now I'm making somebody think. I know it. I can feel it. It feels good. It's time to rethink things. It's the slow season. By the way, look around the yard. Look out for your fellow man. If you can help, lend a hand. I know. Might lead to a lawsuit. You got to be careful. So here's some questions. Here's some good questions to ask yourself. What should customers, the end customer, the shipper, what should they know? What should they, what should they be looking out for? What's the biggest issue in the car shipping industry right now? Somebody sent me these questions today. They're great questions. They're actually, and they're long answers. What's your opinion on the car shipping industry as a whole? Number five is a doozy. How about tips for people looking for a car shipping company? Here's one. Don't Google cheap car shipping. I love industry news. It's all over the place. But that's how that's how we talk and we think and that's how we ju jump in and dive in, right? Joe it's, uh, Joe a car shipper says, "Hey, let's chat." Yeah, man, let's chat. I like that idea. Here I here okay, transport delays trouble dealers and remarketers. Okay, so those were dealers and remarketers, two of the top 5 that I put in the infographic. And a driver says, "These posts make my head hurt. You can't even go into an auction without it sounding like you're in South America." I miss five dollars a mile on a thousand mile run. Well, yeah, yeah, the rates are down. The rate rates are down from where they were. Do you think they're going to go back up? Do you think they're going to go back up? 
Oh, man. It's the Rachel Maddow of trucking. Tractor trailer driver dies Sunday after colliding with the SUV on I-95. This is a hard business, man. Really hard. So don't take the cheap freight. Don't haul cheap. It's not worth it, man. Oh, man. And the tax laws? Stuff changing? By the way, did you hear? Okay, so we got California owner-operator law changes. New Jersey's now talking. Did you hear? I, I heard that Massachusetts and Virginia are also... This... This is something we got to learn. We got to learn and stay up to date on what this is because this is going to change the business model. By the way, this kind of stuff, this is terrible news, but you're going to want to know. 450,000 vehicles recall. Man, recalls all the time, dude. These models include Murano, Maxima sedans, QX60, Pathfinder. Oh, man, 450,000 vehicles. Recall means car shipping. So, you know, I mean, we want to build a business we can be proud of, right? Set up lights and take great photos and share on social media. That's the kind of business we all want. Do we have that? How many people have that kind of business? Some people. Oh, by the way, I hit a milestone today, and I want to thank everybody for being a part of this milestone. This is a big deal. This is a big deal. 7,500 7, subscribers on Auto Transport Intel. Man, thank you guys so much. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm checking the, uh, you know, oh, let's turn that down. We're live on Facebook and YouTube right now. We're actually live on two Facebook pages and the Auto Transport Intel page So on YouTube. So, man, I thank you. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this. I think that's the end of my industry news for tonight. Yes, it is. So what are we going to do next? By the way, do you see the timing on that? 823? And I clocked it in the uh, in the welcome show lineup. I clocked it. We're going to go into the information superhighway at 25 minutes. Dang. That is some timely auto transport intel. Well, we're going to do that. This is the car shipping business industry update Q4 2019. Still have a lot of great information to share with you. I hope you'll stick around. We're going to be right back. Building an auto transport business is not like it used to be. The cake you bake, per se, has changed, and it's crucial that you have the technologies to change as well. You want true QuickBooks integrations? No problem. You want automatic credit card processing? We got it. You want electronic signatures? That's easy. How about a virtual dispatcher working your COD amounts and refreshing the load boards 24-7 for you? Yeah, that's right. No more, I need to bump this job or that job. It's all so time-consuming. Tell our price bot what to do, and he does it. No questions asked. Now that's what I'm talking about. Sign up today or call now for a free demo. All right, welcome back, everybody, to Auto Transport Intel. It's Tuesday nights live. I really appreciate you tuning in. Uh, I appreciate everybody in the live chat saying hello. I know I missed several live chats while I was doing the uh, industry news. Let's see who else we got in here. Uh, Pablo's with us. Oh, Pablo, I read that one. Thank you, man. That's right. Do not take cheap loads. Uh, Bogey Joe Sr. is still in there. That's great, man. And I appreciate you guys sticking around. I know it's a long show, and I know it's hard to stick around. If you need to duck out, go do something else. You can finish it on demand. Also, don't forget to read the descriptions below this video um, the day after I go live. So on Wednesday, I update the description. There'll be links and other information. Um, it's a little bit bloggy, and it's informational, and it's great stuff. So don't forget to check that out. Also, Remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment below. Comment on YouTube. Um, and also, if you're on Facebook, thanks for joining me live. And remember to comment, share, subscribe, etc. I really do appreciate it. Jacob Dillon says, hello, hello. Thank you for tuning in, Jacob. Um, go for it, systems. The way shippers connect with transporters is not effective. Load boards are very outdated. So true. In fact... 
Um, I'm gonna give my uh, I'm gonna give my information on the load boards. I'm gonna say it again in the update, but I'm gonna say this now: is that if you are a technology, if you're in the technology space in car shipping, and by the way, currently in Q4 2019, this is the only business channel where you can find out about all the players in technology by watching my auto transport software update Q4 2019. I made that a few weeks ago. I do not work at any one company. I am a media source and journalist in the car shipping business space. And I go to conferences and I talk to executives. I talk to different folks in the entire industry, carriers, brokers, dispatchers, 3PLs, OEMs, dealers, auctions. And the information is this, is that if you work in car hauling technology, car shipping tech, it's time to get the load information that there is a load to the driver. Saying that you can import loads and get signatures and take photos is no longer enough. It's not enough. You have to be able to get information to the carrier that there's a new better load for them to book. Now I know that many load board loads are the capacity is so low that you know why do I need to do that Jay? Well I'll tell you why. Because there's too many technologies now for any one carrier owner operator to be expected to check them all. Right? There's too many apps, too many load boards, too many places that I've got to do the work and look. The technology needs to find the user. And that goes for the car shipping customer too. I think the days of car shipping customers having to search, that day is going to come to a change. I don't know when it's going to happen exactly, but I am excited about, we're going to be talking about that. Man, so many great informational updates coming. So let's do this thing. Let's go into the information superhighway car shipping industry business Q4 2019. This is the show you've been waiting for. Listen, if you if you've met me at a conference this year, I've been to several conferences. If you've seen me at a conference, we've talked in a hallway, maybe you've heard me speak, maybe you've seen the show, and you're ready to really understand the industry as a whole. Maybe you work at an OEM or a dealership or an auction, third-party service. You work on a ship or a port or in rail, right? In repo. And you don't understand this industry as a whole. We're going to talk about that tonight. That's what this is all about. Shippers, brokers, fleet management services, carriers, dispatchers. Yes, drivers too. Listen, if you are a driver and you believe that you've got, you understand the industry, you're making money, and you don't like brokers, this is not the show for you. There are other places to go talk about how great it is to have a Peterbilt or a Kenworth, Ford, Chevy, Dodge. Those conversations, yes, you can have that all day somewhere else. But if you're interested in learning this industry, I mean really understanding it. Understanding the difference between a CRM, a load board, a TMS, a mobile app, and where things are headed. Car shipping industry business Q4 2019 is for you. If I was standing in a room right now, and like I said, you know, you just, you want to stay loaded, keep praying for better rates. This is not the session for you. I guarantee there are other sessions to go sit in. But if you want to understand how the OEM and the dealer and the auction are feeling right now, they don't feel the same. You know this. If you work at any of those three, you know this. Okay. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> you got my attention. So, you know what? Um, I I'm going to say this. I'm going to do a little setup here. I, uh, I've been thinking about the industry as a whole. Okay. So, for the last, say, 50 years, 50 years ago, up until about five years ago, car shipping business was pretty similar. Business as usual. You had paper logistics, relative uncertainty, internal combustion engine vehicles moving from point to point. Okay, that's pretty standard. 
45, 50 years of pretty standard stuff. Some changes. I mean, other than developments in trailers, changes in cars themselves. Gas-powered changes. Uh, computer software changes in the industry. Regul regulatory changes. This stuff happened in the 80s and the 90s. Okay, and then most recently, ELD. And then changes in brokering with MAP21, and that was in 2012. Okay. The auto transport industry remains somewhat predictable. But you know that in the last five years, lots of technology changes. I mean, you got to use an app now, many apps. The last two years have felt even more changed than probably the previous 40. And in the next five, the landscape is going to change a lot more. You have a lot of people right now talking about every day you can see a driver saying, I'm, I'm going to retire. I'm leaving, right? Okay. Uh, let's do this. I'm going to pull up. I'm going to show you. I got a few graphics here I want to go through. Used Car Week 2019. I just came back from Used Car Week 2019. All right. I talked to a lot of people. And it, and it reminded me that when I go to shows and what I read online, auto remarketing, you ever go to autoremarketing.com? Try that sometime. That's what led me to Automotive Intelligence Summit in Raleigh in July, where I got to meet dealers, OEMs. Where do you think the cars come from? Why, why is there so much car shipping? I know. I'm not talking about rates and load boards. I realize that. But why do you think there's so much car shipping? Why do you think we even have a business? Automotive logistics, finished vehicle logistics. You're a driver for an OEM. Those cars don't, don't make themselves and just end up at a yard somewhere. That's why I went to Automotive Logistics Global Detroit. Again, to meet auctions, dealers, locations, 3PLs. We ended up speaking. We did a trucking lab. We also spoke at the Auto Haulers Association of America in Atlanta. That was an amazing show. But I tell you, nothing was as amazing as when I stood in the room on Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday? Was it Monday? Wednesday? I can't even remember which day. But I remember this conference. It was a packed room where they were talking about what's going on at the auctions. And you know what everybody's talking about? ACV. Carriers are talking about ACV. Brokers are talking about ACV. Auctions, OEMs, everybody's talking about ACV. Why? Because digital live auctions are changing the landscape. This is an interesting graphic. Um, I saw this in two different locations this past week. In 1900, there was one car everything else was horse and buggy in 1913 there was one horse and buggy that's what we're going through right now this is the kind of change we're going through right now this is the kind of thing that an oem is talking about right now smart cities smart mobility smart cars you see the steering wheel i know i thought that was a little strange too but that's what they're thinking. That's what they're talking about. Autonomous, smart cities. They're talking about congestion, parking, pollution, connected cars. Okay, this was at the leadership luncheon. Now, this was on Wednesday. Automobiles have remained essentially unchanged for the last 100 years. Internal combustion engine, four wheels, two rows of seats, steering wheel, Components, you know how many components electric vehicles don't have? It's kind of trippy. And then talking about the, the changes in the next 20 years will be more than the previous 100. That's not just the cars. That's the whole industry. Tesla. The more I learn about Tesla, the more I realize that some of the ideas are right in line with ideas moving into the future. Now, I'm not saying Tesla's the end-all, be-all. And actually, I thought it was kind of funny, too, when they brought car hauling in-house. But you know what? They're not the only ones that are thinking of that. Something to know. If you're a company driver, 
I know you don't want to hear this, but there's a lot of things that are changing. It's not just technology. I told you about that show. If you haven't seen it, you're going to want to check out Auto Transport Software Update Q4 2019. There's a lot to know. And you know how we know that's true? Because now you're seeing on other channels talk about technology. Follow the money and the information. OEMs are restructuring. There's going to be more of this. ACV is changing the way auctions think about where the cars need to be, how much it's going to cost to move it, or how much money you can make by not moving it, how much time you can save, and what's happening right now. What's it going to cost? How much time is it going to take? And what is happening right now? Dealerships are rethinking how dealerships are doing business. Do you know why? Anybody heard of Carvana? You hear it all the time. You see the vending machines all the time. And you know what's really strange? Along with the Uberization of everything. Is that many of these new ideas haven't turned a profit yet. But it's not stopping the idea, and it's not stopping the change and evolution. Dealerships are breaking down what exactly needs to take place for the consumer to buy. They have to. Everybody needs to calculate their profit and loss and revenue model. You have to. And you have to start thinking about what's going to happen, what's going to work tomorrow, what's going to work today and tomorrow. It doesn't matter what worked yesterday. It doesn't matter what worked yesterday. Yeah, okay, it'll work for a while. Again, are you praying for the rates to go back up? Stop that. Here's some myths about the future. Uh, millennials are less interested in driving and owning cars. Not true. They just can't afford it the same way. And if the dealerships are changing the way they do business, guess what else is going to change the way it does business? OEMs are changing. Dealers are changing. Auction, auctions are changing. Here's another myth. Gen X and boomers will soon be leaving the active car buying population. Myth. Ride sharing will significantly shrink the size of the new car market. Is it a myth? I find that so interesting. Is that a myth? Actually, car ownership and car subscriptions define the future, but in what percentages? I don't think these percentages are exactly on target, but we're going to find out. Personally owned autonomous vehicles will cause households to downsize fleets. Personally owned autonomous vehicles... Oh, man, I did get the woke. <laughs> Good one, Joe. People will be replacing traditional vehicle ownership. I'm telling you, I know it sounds crazy. Some of this does sound a little crazy, but it's not totally crazy. Because the next five years, you know what? The next five years are totally going to, man, they're going to be crazy. This is the kind of stuff I saw. I started to see this in different presentations. You think it's just about auctions and dealers and OEMs and Let's just get back to Peterbilt's and Kenworth's. No, man. No. Even the large companies that deal with remarketing and auctions are asking questions about transport. It's peppered within different presentations. And yet, there is no big end-all, be-all car shipping business industry presentation. You won't find it at any trade show. Not that I saw. You will find little breadcrumbs in different presentations, but no room contained the car shipping business industry presentation. So I'm doing it right now, live online on Auto Transport Intel. If you're here with me right now, I'm excited. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for me. Because you know what? Some of what they're talking about. All right. By the way, I know. Carvana is not a real car hauler. I get it. If you're not driving a nine car or a seven car, you're not a real car hauler. Go back to dreaming and noobs and whatever. I uh, know. It's fun to criticize and call each other names. It's a great time. But guess what? If you're moving 
vehicles back to the auction that need to be reconditioned, you're using rollbacks. You know why? Less damages, the insurance company likes it, and by the way, they're trying to find out what's the cost per mile. They're trying to dive into the nitty gritty. This is actual stuff. These are real pictures from a presentation that I shot at Used Car Week. But wait, I thought used Jay, I thought Used Car Week was just about OEMs and dealers and auctions. I didn't know they talked about transportation. Oh, but wait, they don't talk about transportation. Yeah, because flatbed's not transportation. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, they're only moving 100 cars a month from one location. Yeah, that's, boy, that, that wouldn't sustain a business. Nah, let's just go back to praying for rates to go up on the load board. Yeah, nah, let's not get a flatbed. No, let's not look into different business models. That's a total waste of time. Oh, you mean laws are changing? Oh, well, maybe we should look into different business models. Yeah, I already know. I already watched the I, Jay. I already watched your top five car hauling load boards video. Yeah, it didn't work, but I'm still praying for rates to go up. Yeah, I read the 20 steps to start car hauling. By the way, I never told anybody to be a car hauler. I'm just saying, if you're going to research it, here are 20 steps rather than th three or five easy peasy steps. I am not making it rain, and I'm not dumping $100 bills into seats in a truck. I'm not doing that. And by the way, here's one for you. Why is a dealership presentation talking about vehicle condition reports and the value and the change? Why? Why would that be happening? You mean dealers are starting to think about the value of condition reports beyond just the transport? say it isn't so can't be right oh man did i finish i did i finished up that's the list okay that's that list all right so let's do this i've got i'm gonna go into um i'm gonna go into another screen here all right let's change the screen let's talk about automotive industry changes okay so what is Jay talking about now? Automotive industry changes. You know what people are talking about in the hallways at Used Car Week? You know what's cool is one of the things that I think I can do at Auto Transport Intel that not everybody has the opportunity to do, if you're busy day to day building your business, working on your business, growing your business, you can't go to a trade show. You don't have time. But I, I think I've got the time. And I've got the purpose. I need to be going to all these shows, as many as possible. And reporting back to you. That's the goal here. I'm your social media live magazine information resource. There, this, this industry needs one. The auto industry's got different resources. I went through the list of magazines. But if you want to learn car shipping, where do you go? You go to Auto Transport Intel. And here's what I, here's what I learned this week. Now, I didn't just learn this, but this is part of what they're talking about. Um, I'm going to pull this up here. Let's go to, okay. Hey, check this out. Did you know that used car sales have now exceeded new car sales? Consumer buying patterns are affecting dealerships. Legal emission changes in the laws are affecting the OEMs. OEMs are merging, changing. In fact, I just read that Dyson has now decided not to start producing electric vehicles. But did you hear that? The Lordstown plant that had shut down is now going to reopen as an electronic truck manufacturing facility. That's interesting. So these changes in car sales, guess what? They not only affect OEMs, which the way that's them doing business, yeah, affects the dealers, yeah, affects the auction. Guess who it affects? Transportation. The fleets, fleet management services, carriers, brokers, car sales have changed. What else we got here? What is number two? Car manufacturing is changing right now. That's right. Car manufacturing. I talked about the EV plant. And so here's the thing is, used car sales versus new car sales, that changes a lot of the current marketplace but if car manufacturing is changing 
and there's more used cars being sold than new cars, it's an, it's a definite trend to watch because anything that happens, this is remember the trickle down we talk about trickle down. Who's at the top? OEMs. If you're a new car fleet driver and the OEMs are changing the way they do business and where are you where are you picking up cars you're picking up cars at the plant and where are you taking them the dealer and the dealer sales have changed by the way did you know that dealers in many cases are telling the OEMs we're full we don't want more cars you know what if the dealer says to the OEM we're full we don't want more cars you think it's business as usual if you're an OEM fleet driver no man it's not. And by the way, did you know that, uh, you know how you drive empty half the time, right? So you pick up at the plant, you race to the dealership, dump your nine, and drive empty back to the plant? You think it's going to stay that way? It's not. You've heard it just in time inventory. You know that uh, really where the rest of the world has gone, like everybody have you heard of just-in-time inventory? And I don't mean to sound condescending, but I am so tired of reading comments, praying for rates to go up, saying that if anything else changes, I'm going to retire, or that, you know, like, okay, we don't keep out the brokers, keep out the dispatchers. Dude, if you want everything to stay the same, then yeah, I mean, you're going to, you are going to need serious blinders, <laughs> like, because everything is changing. It really is changing. And you don't, dude, you don't need to, you don't have to be part of the change. There really, there's, there is a place. In fact, you know what? I talked to a uh, drive away company last week and they're looking for uh, drive away drivers. So if, if you are tired of change and you just want to be a driver, there is, there are opportunities. You can drive, uh, you know, those vans where people get in, climb in, go to a location, climb out, everybody jumps in cars. You should get in the driveway. There's a place for you. Because if you just want to drive and stop thinking about the business models, drive away is a great way to go. Get in the driveway. Do that. You could be a company driver, get in the driveway, um, and um, I'm not sure what else. But I think that there's a place. I know this show's harsh, man, but it's about change. And, dude, OEM automakers, they're changing too. The OEMs are changing. Let's see, who else we got here? Oh, our technology is changing. Who's tired of technological changes? I know, this one. this one's getting tiring. But it's time for the technology to start changing on our behalf. Stop being reactive. That means we got to stop being reactive. The technology needs to stop being reactive, being proactive. So when technology, check this out, when the new technology isn't just another way to import or export or transport or, or duplicate, right? Who's tired of re-entering the same information? There are a couple companies out there right now telling people that they're the end-all, be-all, overall architecture, maybe. Maybe. How are you going to get the word out? Who, who, you know, how are you, how are you pulling this off? I don't know. One person at a time, maybe, maybe. But if you're tired of too many apps, there are companies working on a solution for you. But that's great and all. But you know what carriers really need instead of praying, right? Praying for change is to get low notifications and be, you know, be spoken to about what can be helpful in their business on the behalf of technology whose inspection is it anyway remember that slide i just pulled out about vehicle inspections do you think your vehicle inspection is worth something see this is one of the things i'm getting to all right carriers you guys work hard and you do a lot it's a very important job but if you don't think anything's changing well then right you just get paid to drive that is not how it's going to work moving forward. It's not just driving. It's the skill sets that go into what you do, like your vehicle inspection. Your vehicle inspection is worthwhile information. And I think, I see dealers and auctions talking about this, even OEMs moving forward. You're adding value as a carrier. 
The driving's the easy part, right? It's not easy. It's not. But the value you add as a logistics technician and the inspection that you do and the communication and the interfacing with the customer, why just be a driver? Remember that be best, be broker? No joke, right? So many guys tired of brokers posting cheap loads. Be the broker. Build your business. Maintain the relationship. Why do such a great job transporting the vehicle only to go pray for another load? Stop doing it. It doesn't make any sense. Now that technology is improving and you can use the technology to do more business, build more transactions. I know you can't use technology to drive faster. Goodness knows you can't drive faster with technology, but you can build more business. And I know that dispatcher that you hate or the broker or whatever. Stop, man. Build your company. Use technology to build your business. That's the purpose of technology. You know, what's technology anyways? It's more tools in the toolbox. How many tools do you have in your toolbox? You don't just have just a screwdriver and a hammer, do you? I don't think so, man. Build your toolbox. Use the technology. That's what the auctions are talking about. That's why everybody's talking about ACV. ACV is turning the auction on its head. Now, listen, you know this because physical auctions, and I'm, I'm telling you, I, I heard it. I sat in the room and I heard it. Anybody who works at a physical auction is reluctantly talking about stopping cars driving through the lanes. That's like... The big no-no. Nobody wants to talk about cars not driving through the lanes anymore. But guess what? In five years, if you still see a car driving through the lane at the auction in 2025, send me an email. I don't even know if you'll have to email me. You'll just like auto-tweet or whatever it is. But I'm telling you, I don't think you're going to see cars driving through the lanes in 2025. Under the name of safety. Even if safety is all you got other than other business models, why drive it through the lane? Why? So you can hear it and see it and touch it and feel it and get the relationship of the bell ringer and the dude, I know, I get it. But things are changing fast and ACV and digital auctions have started this process. Remember, how much time is it going to take? How much is it going to cost? And what's happening right now? Why would a dealership send the car to the auction, let it sit there, what is happening, let it go through the lane, what's happening, back to the lane, back to the dealership, how much time got lost, how much money got lost, and what is happening? Technology is letting dealerships take control. Oh, are you bored because you're a driver? Guess what? If the car's not leaving the dealership to go to the auction, that's a car that didn't need to get transported. You got to know these things. You got to know these things. Dealer to auction, less cars being transported. I know, it's not great, but it's really happening. Car not driving through the lane. I know, it's really happening. And there are, there's not just, it's not just ACV, there's many digital auctions. In fact, the physical, the physical auctions have their own dealer auctions. I mean, digital auctions. Did you know that? So even the physical auctions are doing digital auctions. So what are we going to do with the physical auctions? Well, the physical auctions are a great location for having marshalling yards or reconditioning facilities. Still think about it. If you're moving 10 million cars a year, you still have such a capacity, you need large locations. But here's something I learned. This is interesting. If it's a low mileage, high value vehicle, and it's at a dealership and it needs to be sold, sell it on digital auction. Those are the easy ones to sell. If it's high mileage, lower value, and you know older in year and has different aspects about it, features that are, you know, scratches, additional information. Those are the vehicles that are going to make it to the auction. So the auctions are going to become a location of more varied 
vehicles that need to be moved, okay? So auctions still have a place. I know. I didn't say that so great. <laughs> it's okay. All right. That's okay, man. We're almost at one hour in. I knew this would take a while. Dealerships are going through changes. Man, I I've talked about some of those changes. Check my notes. Hey, by the way, um, this is, for the record, this is the first time I've given this presentation. I've been building this last week, today, so I apologize, and I'm live too, and so I apologize if some of my words aren't right on track, um, but I am, I'm, I, I am going to be, I'm going to be doing this more and talking about this, maybe coming to a location near you and speaking about this. Oh my gosh, you mean car ownership's going to change too? All right, the OEMs are changing, the dealers are changing, the auctions are changing. Why? Do they just change because they wanted to? Because it's, you know, what's 2020's coming up. Let's just change. Let's be science fiction. No, man. Car ownership is changing too. You know, the Uberization is hitting everything. Again, what's it going to cost? How much time is it going to take? And what is happening right now? And by the way, like it or dislike, and, you know, you can make fun of everybody moving back in with their parents or whatever. But the millennials live a different lifestyle than the baby boomers. And it's not all about, you know, what they want and Starbucks and all this stuff. They don't have the same income the baby boomers had. They can't just ride out, buy a car. Why do you think used car sales are higher than new car sales? It's about affordability. It's not about demand. It's about affordability. And by the way... Getting back to the Uberization of everything. If everything is on your app and on demand, guess what? Why Why should I, this is what some people are asking themselves, why should I buy a car that sits in a parking lot eight hours a day, but I only need it for one or two hours a day? Why? And you know who's also asking that question? Tesla. So Tesla's saying, well, I'll tell you what, buy a Tesla... It's got summon, it'll drive autonomously, and so you drive it to work or get a sleep your sleep on your way to work, get to work, and you, what, you're at work before nine or whatever, you don't need your car again until after four, so there's seven hours. You wanna make money on the side? For seven hours, you can use your Tesla to make money. Send it out, perform ride sharing, make another money, right? Make another money. Dude, that's crazy. That is what Tesla is talking about. It's users, consumers, buyers, and subscribers doing with their cars. And guess what happens if that's successful? Dude, everybody's going to want to do that with their car. Not everybody. Jeez. Not everybody's going to want to do that. I know. It's crazy. You peer into the future. It's like, it's like the abyss. It's freaky. But I'll tell you what. It's not just that. That's kind of a larger larger goal that's, that's happening. But a lot of these OEMs and dealers are talking about car adoption in several stages. And autonomous is one of the stages. It's not the first or second stage, but car subscription. Dude, car subscription. You can subscribe to a car like you can subscribe to Pandora. I know it sounds crazy. By the way, Jay, what does this have to do with car shipping? Oh, I don't know. You know, uh, if the OEMs have changed the way they've done business and the dealerships have changed the way they do business and the auctions have changed the way they do business, guess how much that affects the car shipping business? Like, tremendously. Okay? And by the way, it, what, happens if, what happens if a carrier or broker realizes a new Uberized business model? What does that look like? Is that even possible? I don't know. I wonder it. But you know how we're going to find out? You remember, remember how we keep praying that rates will go up, right? And we're praying that brokers will raise the rates. Who's in control? And do, what is fleet management services anyways? Anybody know what fleet management services is? You know what, you know what the really big brokers are doing? Right? Brokers. Carriers. Fleet management service companies. Guess who services like the really large rental companies? Making sure that they've got 
thousands of cars ready to go. Guess who helps make sure that these large corporate relocation companies have their cars ready to go, right? So you're, you're, you're in an office building and you, you, know, you, get a, you get your company car. Guess who makes sure your company car is ready to go? How does that happen? Okay, the transporter might bring you the car, but who did all the paperwork in the background? The titling and the registration and all that? Who handled that? Ever heard of a fleet management service company? And if you're a fleet management service company and you handle all these different aspects of these company cars, rental cars, fleets, I mean, think of equipment. I just talk, All I did is talk about sedans. What about heavy equipment? Think about all the equipment out there being used, transported, traded, bought, sold. Fleet management service companies, right? They've done both and currently do both, and they have their own channels. That's right. And who was talking about it? <laughs> okay. You know what? Listen, this is an industry, and there's a lot to talk about. And uh, by the way, if you're looking for a trailer, man, I've had guys on this channel. If you're looking for a specific trailer, there are some great videos out there being made. But if you want to talk about the industry as a whole, this is where we're going to do that. I really, I, I can't believe F fleet management services. Who is talking to fleet management service companies and interviewing them? You're going to see that. That's happening next. By the way, I'm going to mention this now. I've got a great show booked next Tuesday night with a, remember we were talking about types of car ownership? That's next week. We're going to be talking about that. Okay. Oh, uh, man. Changes in the law. Dude. You know, um, this one, this one's a killer. If the other, if the other line items on my list of changes didn't do it for you, this one might. This might be, this is the one where you see the most people talking about maybe retiring. ELD was big, right? And frustrating. But wait until the FMCSA drug and alcohol clearinghouse hits. When does that hit? Um, in about 45 days, it is like in place. You're already being expected. Who's doing this? Are you guys, are you guys getting signed up? Are you going to the clearinghouse page on the FMCSA website? Are you doing that? Because you have to be doing that like right now. Um, also that California independent contractor law, man, that thing's huge. New Jersey's on the map next. Um, what about emissions laws? That one was tough too, right? And that, I mean, just, just getting used to that idea. But you know who's really getting used to emissions laws right now? The OEMs. It is literally changing why. Did you know that OEMs are looking at making and selling electric vehicles at a loss in the beginning just to comply with the laws? Yeah, so we're not, it's not just car shipping that's dealing with laws and losses. Global laws like Brexit, which is still, oh my gosh, Brexit globally is causing havoc everywhere. And, and again, domestically, tariffs, crazy. Crazy, man. The changes in the laws are so big, it, it is, it's unbelievable. So what do you do with all this? Wow. And I see a lot happening in the live chat. I hit the siren. Used cars are getting cheaper and easier to get financed. Boy, banks too. You, you, you know what? And that's another uh, one of the things I was talking about is partnerships, um, new business models. I saw uh, how Ship Your Car Now and Three Two One Ignition, Ship Your Car Now broker, Three Two One Ignition is digital marketing. The two are partnering together to form a new business model for both of them. To, I mean, they're not like in the same building or anything, but working in new creative ways to grow business. Will California new law put owner operators out of business? Yes. Not all of them, but some of them. It's not just the owner operators though. Dude, Hanson and Adkins, right? Uh, what, a thousand plus trucks is talking to any of its, again, I, I, this is what I've heard, talking to Anybody in California who works with Hanson and Adkins, and that is a lot of companies, is having to restructure how they do business. Business is already difficult. Again, right, 
praying for rates to go up. But having to restructure your business, given a new law, that's why you have to stay ahead of information if possible. If, however, you become the broker and get the loads, you'll pay the insurance for the driveway driver. Boy, Bogey Joe Sr., great stuff. And you guys think Hot Shots hauling freight makes the same or more money than Hot Shot hauling cars? Man, that's a good question, DB. Uber-like app is here. Right, Nico? I know you stay informed. I know you're trying to help. It's, it is. It's a big deal. Um, cars that are rented have tendency to get driven like they're stolen. I wouldn't want... And you know, that's what I say about car subscription, too. Is Here's the thing. How can you how can you be sure that especially within ride sharing how can you be sure the person you're car subscribing ride sharing with is going to treat the car well I know you've seen the scooters laying around in the cities it's such a good question the car will drive itself in the future will it transport itself in the future too or is that just minority report is that the year 2100 does a car that drive itself need to be delivered on a truck that's a great question. Cries driving autonomously with a driver asleep at the wheel, but getting the police called on the for driving. <laughs> oh my gosh. The cost and value of better auto transport. That's what the OEMs, the dealers, the auctions third-party logistics company, vessel shipping, rail, terminals. I'll say it again. The cost and value of better auto transport. That's what everybody is looking for. That's why the rates seem so low. Because the cost and value of better auto transport is what everybody's looking for. So if you are finding yourself in a position where you are praying for the cents per mile to go back up, it is time to maybe think it's not going to happen. It's going to go up a little, man. Listen, seasonality, but I'll tell you what, I know this from other, from other uh, news sources. Just go ahead and read other news sources. Find out what other folks are saying. Are things going to get better? They're never going back to what they used to be. I know, it sucks. It sucks. The, the idea that we can't repeat the past is harsh, man. It's really harsh. But we can't repeat the past. I mean, you can see moments of it. There, there'll, there'll be some things that repeat. And not everything's just getting worse this isn't just all doom and gloom and like after at the end of the show we all drive off into the abyss Thelma and Louise style but you remember back remember that picture I showed like a hundred years ago remember like horse whip buggy companies and how they they were like the buggy whips gotta come back dude seriously shipper broker fleet carrier dispatch we're all seeing changes we have to find ways to realize how the change can help us build a better business model you know how you can use it crm load board tms mobile app use better technology to create what the oem the deal the auction 3pl companies the cost and value of better auto transport, that's what they're looking for. This is the car shipping business update. It's the cost and value of better auto transport. That's what companies are looking for. So, Jay, what is the answer? Remember the questions? How much time is it going to take? What's it going to cost? What's happening now? And how do I know? Because you know this every time you book a load. You, the, the, you get asked, how, how much time is it going to take? And it's not just every single car you book. It's what all the dealers are asking of all the cars that they get from the OEM or that they sell to the auction. How much time is it going to take? What's it going to cost? 
What's happening now and how do I know? That's what everybody wants to know. If you can capitalize on better information to answer those questions, to provide true cost and value of better auto transport, you can build a better business. Maybe you pivot. We all have to pivot from time to time. That's why my, this is not the same show I made two and a half years ago. I'm not going back to doing dispatching shows, searching for loads, and praying for better rates. I have to pivot too. We all have to pivot and build a better business for tomorrow. And if that upsets somebody, so be it. That's what we have to do. That's what it requires to build a better business into the future. That's what every single person on this page is doing. And there is not a section on this page that isn't reevaluating how they do business and how to answer the questions. How much time is it going to take? What's it going to cost? What's happening now? And how do I know? If you're not asking those questions, you're not moving forward. If you are sitting and praying for better rates, you are not moving forward. You've got to do something different. I know, it's crazy. It's crazy. Ah, uh, great question. It should just drive itself from the factory. <laughs> hey, hey, Jay. Jumped off Facebook, joined YouTube to see all the feed. Can you tell me what the wet stuff is falling out of the sky? <laughs> How is it raining in Arizona? Oh, man, that's funny. I know, it's crazy stuff. It is crazy. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into um, we're going to go into an industry panel. And and by the way, um, let's see if I went. I think I went through all of my slides there. Yeah, I think I did. And I, what what I want to ask you before I before I finally leave this page and this page is: Do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, I know that the chances that. A, that chances that somebody in an OEM watching this show willing to text something right now in the live chat, those chances, those chances are slim. I, I get that. And I know because, by the way, getting, being able to take the time and talk to somebody at an OEM, that's hard. It is hard to get that opportunity. I did make a couple more OEM friends at the show. Great talking to you guys and looking forward to talking in the future. OEMs are excited that I'm talking about this stuff, um, and that's that's a great thing because to 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 defrag this industry, we have to start breaking through the silos, and I saw that happening in the live panels of the show. The chances that a dealer is gonna live chat something right now again very slim because. Number one, if you work at a dealership, you are so busy focusing on who on how to build and satisfy your young car buying, car subscription, uh, uh, the growing younger marketplace. You know how much effort goes into growing better new digital marketing solutions so that you can get the car buyers into your dealership. You know how much thought goes into how much you're going to be changing your dealership instead of looking like a, a conventional dealership like you'd see in Fargo to look more like a Starbucks or a bank or a library? I know, crazy, right? Because I tell you what, the future of the dealership looks like Starbucks. What I wonder is, what's Starbucks going to do in the future if the dealership looks like Starbucks and a bank? That'll be interesting. What's the future of the auction look like? Ask a physical auction guy what he thinks the future of the auction looks like. He's certainly not going to text it here live on Auto Transport Intel. Because he doesn't want to talk about it. There's no cars going through the lanes. And it's a bunch of guys staring at screens. Right? Crazy, right? Where'd the bell ringer go? Listen. Auctions still are doing business. And where does this dispatch guy from auto transport intel get off talking about the future of auctions 
But let me tell you, somebody needs to talk about it. You're not going to have any auction employees talking about this on any social media. Not like this. But it's true. That's what's being talked about. And seeing the physical auction guys sit next to the digital auction guys is interesting. Because they're saying different things, and yet it's the same marketplace. The digital auction guy, yeah, he's really pushing the digital solution, the dealer selling cars right from the dealership. And the physical auction guy is like, now we're still moving cars through the lanes. By the way, what does this have to do with car shipping? Oh, I don't know. Just that every car from an OEM at a dealership or sitting in an auction touched a transporter at least once, twice, four or five times? How many times do cars bought and sold at auctions see a transporter? I mean, it's a li- throughout the life of a car, it could be up to ten times. What happens? Reconditioning, remarketing, repossession, those three PLs, those freight forwarders that help. What if those guys become in-house at the auction or a part of the dealership? What, if, what happens to the three PLs? Now, this is why I put hold up on the screen. There's going to be terminals. There's going to be vessel shipping. There's going to be rail, plants. That stuff isn't changing. Not in the global space. But what happens if the auctions and the terminals and the plants kind of become the same thing? That's interesting. That could happen. Auction 3PL and hold, there could be a lot of merger right there. All right, let's drop down. Let's go to shipper, broker, fleet, carrier, dispatch. Now, some people say that brokers and dispatchers are the same thing. Okay, maybe so. Maybe some brokers are hiding under the dispatch insignia. But that doesn't sum it up for all brokers, and it doesn't sum it up for all dispatchers. That's just like, that's like, that's like the people that think that all drivers are some certain way. It's not true. It's not true at all. Some drivers are carriers. Some drivers are owners. Some drivers are brokers. Some brokers are fleet carriers. Some carriers are brokers. In fact, the people that are doing business, growing, and meeting each other at conferences, they do all of it. They really do. Broker, fleet, carrier, dispatch, all under one roof. But... When you grow to that size, you can't do it all. You can't service all your customers. That's why you have sub haulers. So if you're a carrier business, make friends with the broker fleet carrier dispatch companies. Make friends. They're always looking for more sub haulers. And by the way, that was something that, um, I, you know, on this note, as I put on the screen here, um, what, I don't, what I don't think I have on here is... Um, The changes that are happening into driver shortage, this talk about driver shortage. Where did that go? I had that bullet point. Let's pull that up. Um, Driver shortage and should you start your own business? Right. Driver shortage and should you start your own business? Okay. So wait a minute. If there is a driver shortage, why shouldn't we all start our own business? Well, it's expensive. And in some states, there's some legal challenges with starting your own business. So maybe go ahead and lease on or be a driveway driver. Get some business coaching. Yes, watch other YouTubers and learn what they're saying. Listen, I'm not a driver in a truck. So if you want to be a driver in a truck, there are videos for that. But that's not the end-all, be-all, because you need to understand the business as a whole. You can't learn the entire business by just sticking in one of these white squares. You gotta, here, where's my, you gotta learn all the squares, man. Seriously. It's not just about importing loads and getting a Ram 5500. That is not all the answers. I'm telling you, it's not. You got to understand the flow of the business. I realize maybe you don't want to. Maybe you just want to go back to the old ways. But if you're starting a business, there is no going back. There is only going forward. You have to understand what's happening in the marketplace. 
How much time is it going to take? How much is it going to cost? What's happening now? And how do you know? How can you prove it? What do you think OEMs want to know? Let's go back to this one. Let's go back to the wide squares. What do OEMs want to know? They want to know where is the car right now? What do you think brokers want to know? Where is the car right now? Why do you think brokers get all the business from folks like OEMs? If you're a carrier and you want to get shippers, can you just cast your line, put up your web page, and hope you get found on the internets? No. No, you can't. That's not going to work. We're going to be talking about the lead generators. Man, I didn't even put lead generators on here because the lead generators, it is a big part of how the individual shipper finds its carrier or broker. Um, but, I mean, I, actually, I would put lead generators under 3PL. I think if I had to categorize it or I'd put it under technology, it's a tough one. It really is a tough one. Or maybe I'd just put it under shipper. But... Uh, in growing your business, you've got to understand that maybe being a broker is the way to grow your business. And I'm not saying everybody needs to go run out and be a broker and start a po podcast. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying though, is think about, think about the industry, how it's changing and how you can, can benefit on that change. Hey, what about, how about this? How about all the people that went out and joined Amazon by getting an Amazon van and being an Amazon driver? You think that five years ago they thought that was a viable business model? Who would have thought that people could carve out their niche in the world by being an Amazon driver, sweating, sweating it all day to deliver 100 packages every day? But if that's what it takes, that's the niche. You carve out your niche. You find your niche, man. Everyone in the car industry will just end up staring at screens. Maybe. Maybe. Because everybody in the car is going to just be staring at screens. Everybody's going to be staring at screens. It's true. In fact, until the screen stares at itself. Setting up as an ink or an LLC is another way to help distinguish a business-to-business -business model in California. I actually heard that ink is a better way versus LLC. How interesting. Wow, because we've heard LLC is the way to go for so long. Made for future trucking is guys staring at screen. <laughs> yeah, that, well, you know what? Hey, by the way, did you hear this steadfast? That uh, they're taking away the mirrors and putting in uh, cameras with video monitors shaped like mirrors inside the cab. They're talking about how that improves aerodynamics outside of the truck, how it improves um, safety, visibility, etc. Really interesting. California law is pushing companies back to a true employee driver model. This is why the contractor used needs to be a fleet contract with many vehicles and drivers. Love it, Richard. Thank you. All Joe agrees all day long, and I don't even know the business. My experience comes from commodities industry. Yeah, man. It's so interesting. It is. So I'll tell you what. Let's do this. Um, let's do... And thank you so much, by the way. If you have stuck around for any or all of this car shipping industry business Q4 2019, I appreciate you. I thank you for your time. I want you to stick around because what we're going to do is, oh, the CTS business coaching question of the day. You know, I forgot about the question of the day, actually. Um, that is my bad. I, I spent so much time working on the other stuff. Who's got a good question? Oh, and here we go. Let's do this. What question should we ask? It should be an industry question. Oh, wait. Here we go. Can you see me? There we go. Who's got a good question to ask? Um, I'll come up with a question here in a second. <laughs> I'm going to go into the... No mirrors can improve gas mileage, but at least a quarter mile per gallon? That's crazy. That not that hard to believe? That actually is really hard to believe. All right, here's what we're going to do. After the break, think of your questions. Think of your CTS business coaching question of the day. What we're going to do is we're going to go into the video Zoom interview meeting car business industry discussion. 
I want you to stick around. We're going to be back right after this with ACI Transport and CTS Business Coaching. IATA. IATA stands for Independent Auto Transporters Alliance. Visit the website IATA.biz. The mission, driving auto transport business together. Drivers, managers, owners, carriers, networking and sharing best practices. IATA provides access to suppliers with discounts. That's right, discounts. IATA, always working to make the car shipping industry better. IATA, something we can all be proud of. If you're a carrier and you're interested in joining IATA, visit the website iata.biz. Click on Become a Member. Follow the register and checkout process. Got questions? Click Contact Us on the website. All right. Thank you so much for coming back to Car Shipping Business Industry Update Q4 2019. I know it's a lot. Um, it's kind of crazy stuff. A lot of futuristic stuff, right? But that's what's so interesting is a good, ha a good half of what I said is being talked about every day at these large silos in our industry. You know, we think of car shipping as, okay, so you've got, you've got guys in used car shipping, men and women, in used car shipping, carriers, praying for better rates on load boards, thinking, okay, I got too many mobile apps, I hate brokers, I need the load board rates to go up. That's, that's happening in used car shipping every day across the nation right now. Crazy, right? That, 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 that sums up ha about how, not half, but many, too many people. That's what they're going through right now, right? They're not going back through their spreadsheets and finding who did I just work for? Who do I need to build a relationship with? And by the way, it's not just the brokers. Is there a way to break into the dealerships? Is there a way to break into the auctions? Is there any way to get connected to an OEM through other types of relationships? Now, I know I say that and I'm talking to the new car haulers. There's, there are... There is a huge group of new car hauling business drivers. They have nine car, ten car haulers, happy hauling new cars, happy at the company they're working for, don't want to hear dispatcher talking about the future and craziness. I know. I get it. But here's the thing. These business models are changing, and I hear carrier, broker, managers, supervisors, owners talking about a lot of these changes. It worries them. It worries, how are they going to keep all the trucks full? Or, it's a seasonal thing. Okay, we're going to be fine in these months, but in these other months, what are we going to do? Or, okay, we're doing pretty good with this one customer during this time, but what if that contract changes? You read the news about some of the changes happening. What if those changes happen to your business? One of the reasons why I put together... The car shipping business industry update is to talk about all these different silos to help defrag this industry. Because we have to we have to focus on what's happening in other segments. That's how we're going to understand what's happening in our segment. Again, why are all the rates going down? And this is a good question. If you are praying for rates to go back up, but we know that more used cars are being sold than new cars and the used car rates aren't going up, what is going to happen? Have you heard about how many new car hauling businesses go out of business? Um, every day, somebody is looking into starting up a car hauling business. And by the way, I get it, right? If you have a business, last thing you want to hear is there's another new competitor. And the last thing you want to do is give that new competitor new business ideas of how to exceed your business model and do better than what you're doing. I know. It'd be frustrating. It is frustrating. Uh, Candy says, okay, new, once, used, forever. Good. That's a good point. Um, can you get better drivers if you set up your business as an S-Corp? I love these specific questions. Okay, Aaron says, about to hop on this live with Jay. Would be happy to answer your business setup questions. 
Ooh, Aaron studied accounting and worked as a CPA for four years. Fantastic. That's actually okay. So who's joining the show right now? And, the, and I just I sent out the live ch the li the uh, sent out the Zoom video meeting interview invites. Ty, you should look for yours if you're available. Ty, uh, sometimes Ty is not available in the evenings. He's got other things going on. Really busy things happening with Ty. But I've got Aaron and Jesse from ACI Transport. They're joining shortly. What else do we have going on here in the live chat? Everyone in the car industry will just... You know, <laughs> yes, I was reading that about the screens. Um, let's see. And Mark. Oh, by the way. And I want to remind you guys. Let's do this. Um, some of the folks that I talked to. At Used Car Week, right? I know. I've been talking about Used Car Week a lot. You've got to check out... Uh, hey, by the way, do you know when your next big conference is coming up? And who's doing the conference, by the way? Okay, think about who's in your space. Okay, so we just talked about IATA. Uh, I know IATA is going to have... There's going to be a conference. There's, there's an IATA conference happening in 2020 at some point. We'll keep you posted of that. Auto Haulers Association of America, um, lots of company owners, larger fleets. But what about the small owner operator? What's a conference for the owner operator? And this is something I was talking to Ziggy about at IATA and hope to get you more information about that. Because if you work in general trucking, oh, here we go. I got, uh, let's get Jesse and, and uh, Aaron in here. Hello. Hey, what's going on? Okay, hi. Can you can you see me and hear me? Okay. Yes. All right. Cool. We've Loved got... your show so far. <laughs> hey. Yeah, man, it's been kind of crazy. Um, talking about change, and you, we were talking earlier. I've been, by the way, before I jump into all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to welcome you to the show. Thank you for joining me tonight. This is Aaron at ACI Transport, and Jesse. From ACI Transport, guys, thanks so much for joining the show. Please say hello to the audience. How you guys doing today? I was getting the comments pulled up here. Uh, by the way, Aaron, you said, I was just reading your comment. And Ty, thanks for joining. Can you see us here? It's okay. <laughs> Ty is <laughs> That's a no. <laughs> it sounds like a no. <laughs> Can you see me, Ty? Can you hear me? Peace. I got a peace sign. Oh, he's fixing the audio. Okay, Aaron, you've got an accounting background? Yeah, I um, I couldn't help myself reading the comments here. Actually, our company, ACI Transport, is set up as an S-corporation. Uh, part of it being, you know, one of the things I want to speak on is, is our thought process on our stack of priorities here. We're an employee-first company. And being an S Corp kind of dovetailed into why we set up the company the way we did uh, so that we can get some more active participation out of our ownership group and um, consider uh, an ESOP later down the line as we continue to grow the business. So an S Corp does provide some different tools that maybe you wouldn't otherwise have in an LLC or a normal C Corp. But honestly, the best advice is to always just go talk to your CPA, answer their questions and... Um, they should be able to advise you on what's best for specifically what you're trying to do. So, but as your day job, no, I'm just kidding. So <laughs> you are Aaron at ACI Transport. You're Jesse at ACI Transport. I met you guys in the hallway at Used Car Week. In fact, if I recall right, this is cool, Ty, is that um, I heard, I think I walked over and said, I just heard you guys say dispatcher three times. Yeah. Yep. That sounds about right. <laughs> What were yeah, you, yeah. What were you guys talking about when I came over? Like, what? This is a fly on the wall point of view. What are you guys talking about in the hallways at Used Car Week? Well, for us, this was our first time going out there, so we were wrestling with the idea of should we get a booth? Should we just go and attend? And we wound up the first time going out, just attending and kind of existing with all the other attendees, going to the seminars, learning. Uh, participating in the Q&As, and it was very informative. At, at the very least, uh, when I followed up with a couple of the people I've connected with there, 
I mentioned how just overall refreshing it was to hear some of these industry leaders talk about the exact same concepts that we've been building our company now on for four years. And myself and the other leaders here at ACI, we're not from the transport industry or the automotive industry originally. Um, I'm the CEO, Jesse's our executive vice president. Uh, Gary is in the comments, he's our COO. I saw him uh, put a comment in there earlier. And um, Jesse and Gary are both from uh, hotels. We have a hospitality background. Myself, I was in accounting and finance and kind of through a weird series of events, uh, we kind of got together and created ACI Transport as just a, a pure vehicle logistics broker and kind of to get on my ramble here, but um, so. I know it's crazy. We're live, <laughs> right? We're, we're live. We work in auto transport. We yep. talk about it all the time, and yet we're talking about used car week. Question, do yes. you think there's a place for car shipping business to be at a convention called used car week? It, it has to. Oh, um, my gosh, right? Yeah, it has to. So one of the things, and you touched it on, on a, a little bit um, in your earlier uh, segment, but honestly, there... Um, the biggest thing that I noticed while I was there, right, sitting in the halls and having conversations is that everybody just talked about transport fleetingly, right? It was a four letter word and it was no one actually wanted to talk about it. It was just it is what it is. Um, and that's a problem. Um, you know, we had a lot of situations where the conversation, especially on the remarketing side, went all the way up to, OK, I got my car repoed and then it became money somehow. Um, <clears throat> totally, right. And <clears throat> totally. Ty, did you hear what he just said? I love what you said. All the way up through the cycle, and then it became money somehow. Yep. That's and so, right. Yeah, and so it, it, we need to have a voice. Um, as transporters, we need to be on these panels. Um, I'm going to push to have myself on there and Aaron and, and really represent uh, everywhere that they're going to allow us to because – they need to understand that there's there's a cost analysis that goes along with that. And that that's going to be more and more important as used cars are now the most important thing in the market, right? We just got done hearing that the new, new vehicles aren't as big at the moment. So in 2020, that remarketing piece is going to be super important. And how do you sell them if you can't get the cars to the end user? So, you know, transport needs to be involved. Um, I, you know, you and I had had some discussions about the organizations, um, and, uh, you know, the IATA is definitely something that you advertise. There's something that I, I might look into as well. Um, but we just need to band together and have dialogue. I know Finnish Vehicle Logistics is a conference, but where are they in this one, right? So we need to represent ourselves there. Totally. So Automotive Logistics. So, for example, like Automotive Logistics Magazine. You guys get this? Yeah, yep. Anybody out there that doesn't get Automotive Logistics Magazine, go to AutomotiveLogistics.com, sign up for the magazine. And I think I, I, I think that you can do the same with auto remarketing. I know that mm -hmm. there are magazines in print. I know I didn't just grab, that's not a screen, that's an actual magazine. They actually make those still, right? It's, <laughs> it's very helpful to read this material every chance. Like at breakfast... At Used Car Week, you know what I'm doing while I'm eating breakfast? I'm reading these magazines, you know, yep. or I'm looking yep. at a screen. But but it, it, I agree with you. What's really interesting is all this information, and yet there's no car shipping industry magazine. You're right. There's not one. I mean, you know, there's there's transport topics and uh, some other things, but they talk there's, about there's, trucking. They talk about you got trucking. It. Right, and it's freight driven mostly. Right. If three, you know, they're talking about um, everything but auto, it feels like. So, you know, it, it, it needs to be represented. And it does. And, and that's why I say in these conferences, there were breadcrumbs, like you said, there were breadcrumbs of mm -hmm. car shipping. And then suddenly it turns into money. But when I saw I saw that repo, it was that repo presentation and actually like five slides talking about transport, flatbeds, money. I'm like. Okay, we're getting close. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, we're back to customers and remarketing. Yep. It's amazing. Yep. 
We do. Yeah, the we first do. time I saw that remarketing magazine was actually at the conference last week, and I picked it up and started reading this. And I'm like, oh, is this? I thought it was just something they had produced for the conference, mm. and then come to realize, oh, this is something I can read frequently. I found a lot of good, knowledgeable information in there. Not, not only, not only can you get that auto remarketing, but uh, there's like a subscription to it i think it's actually by the cherokee media group who put on the event They're but amazing um, cherokee media group Love excellent them. yeah but you can subscribe to all that stuff if you did want an electronic copy you know i'm sure that you could get a print one but uh, i mean you could get that every day in your email literally wake up having your breakfast you read it on your phone if that's what you want to do but i want to read this storefront flips just said i work at a repo company and business is booming in the chicagoland area I believe it. Right? And, and that's the thing is, there are, and by the way, I guarantee there's somebody driving right now getting just dollar dollar bills from the sky and rates are amazing and central dispatch is perfect and everything I said is wrong and everybody they know <laughs> is like has buggy whips. I guarantee it, right? Right. But for the most part, <laughs> I really do believe everything I said. I mean, I heard it at the show. And when you talk to an a, like an executive level business owner, they're a little bit nervous. Okay. Mm -hmm. Having said that, Candy, I want to say this. Candy just said it. Ty, I have not let Ty speak at all. Ty from CTS Business Coaching. I want to say, man, I really, really appreciate you. I do not want you to think I take it for granted. When I see your emails, your texts, and I need something, I need help with something, you're always there for me, buddy. Thank you so much. What's going on? Oh, I can't hear you. Yeah, we can't hear you. Audio, audio. I know. Oh, come on. You have audio. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Wish I was better at reading lips. You know yeah, right. So I wait. Have I not had any te <laughs> have, have I not had any technical difficulties tonight? Oh, hey, oh you better knock on some wood. So this you might it. have just jinxed it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is my technical difficulty. Man, that's crazy. All right. Well, Ty, buddy, even if you're in like a screaming chamber and nobody can hear you, it's like a science fiction movie. In fact, this whole Pure thing reaction. has been a science fiction movie. All right. So, so what do you guys give Ty a voice? What were you gonna say? I know I, no, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know what Ty would say. I, unfortunately, I haven't gotten the pleasure of meeting Ty yet. But I, I honestly think that uh, these repo yards are, are gonna be busy, and they're also we heard in the conference, right? I'm sure you heard it in the same a lot. thing. Oh my gosh! It's hard for these guys to be insured, and so they're also going away, and we just need to. I, I, we got to get together and figure out moving cars. So and that's really what it is. And by the way, and that's why I talked about fleet uh, brokers and fleet management companies getting bigger is that these freight forward companies, you hear freight forwarders all the time. Repo mm -hmm. lots make less money because of freight forwarders. If you're out there right now trying to figure out what business to start, maybe rather than starting a driver trucking business, See if you can get into one of these middleman industries. I'm not saying I'm not saying I love the idea, and I, right. I, I, I but I, but what I am saying is these are the companies growing. Why? Yeah. Why are the middleman industries growing, and the, the the guy in the trenches business is not growing? I mean, that, there's a couple reasons to that. Generally speaking, obviously there's. There's different niches in this market. Right now, we're getting to the busier season for repos as we kind of get into holidays on repos in particular. Money's more tight. Uh, people default more on loans. So you kind of see business pick up there on the holidays, right? And then that kind of slows down during tax season right as new car sales are going up. So just to kind of circle back to that bit about the repo business picking up. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, about the difference between you know asset-based and some type of middleman company I mean, there's, there's a couple of reasons. There's a lot of regulations out there now for the asset-based carrier. Not only do you have the cost of overhead uh, of the actual equipment, which makes it more difficult to scale, when you're operating in that middleman environment, you know, you, you don't get to necessarily control the physical service of the product, but you do get to control kind of the environment in which all the data is flowing through and being communicated to all the parties involved. And it's easier to scale uh, maybe easier is the wrong word, but there's less 
financial barriers uh, to scale a middleman type organization because you have there's uh, there's still heavy insurance, but there's less equipment involved. You know, our biggest asset here is our people. You know, our, our biggest fixed asset is computers and desks and chairs. So, it, you know, it's it's different. We're not out here um, actually physically hauling the loads. We're not putting our safety at risk by being on the roads, which is why, you know, we've tried to position ourselves as a unique in the market to be the most driver centric broker out there to, to kind of take a nod to the fact that when I'm talking to a shipper, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Shipper, I'm not physically going to be there to pick up your car or deliver it or physically inspect it throughout the process. But we're going to try to facilitate the best experience possible that includes a good rate, good communication, and be here to answer the driver's questions and give them everything they need to make it as likely as possible that the shipping experience goes smoothly. Money's a, a huge factor in that, as well as just really communication and, and how we're managing the, the translation of data from one party to the other. Well, and I know like we were talking about like values, you know, you, this is something mm -hmm. you hear this in the, in the conferences, right? That, uh, once, once business is discussed, then it becomes talking about values and celebrating great people and great relationships. And I heard you guys talking mm -hmm. about, you value that as well. And it seems, you know what's frustrating is that we, when we meet people individually, we meet a lot of great like-minded people. But when we mm -hmm. see like this terrible rate posted on a load board, who in the world is that? <laughs> right? Yeah. And why yeah. are there, why do we seem to, we find the characteristics of people we don't like in great numbers when we can't see anybody. Like you when it's faceless. Right. Whenever, like yeah. you drive on the road and it's a bunch of road raging nut jobs. But when you meet somebody individually at the store, everybody's pretty wonderful. What is going on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll let Aaron speak to the values of our company here in just a second because yeah. he's, he's a champion for that. But, you know, it really, you, you brought up, uh, you had a couple examples like 28 cents a mile or something crazy like that. Crazy. It's just not, you know, it's not sustainable. And, and we really strive to not do that because we understand what it means to, to, you know, have repairs to do. And we really are close with a lot of our, with a lot of our drivers and our vendors. And we um, really actually see them as partners. I know a lot of people probably say that, but I mean, we, you know, I'm talking about, somebody just had a kid and like, we know everything about them and, and uh, that's important to us. And I, if I don't know something about a lane, who's better to talk to than the actual driver. So let me talk about that with him. What's a reasonable rate. And if I can sell that, I will. And sometimes I'll walk away from something. And that goes to what you're saying is that don't take bad rates. And that includes brokers. So, and I understand why brokers get a bad rep. Um, Me too. But there is a there is a way to change that, and just like the topic of the day, which seems to be the theme of the day, has changed. We're trying to do that too. Yeah. I, um, interestingly enough, to piggyback off that, I interviewed two we had two sales reps come here for a second round interview today, and in both of the interviews, I kind of uh, they're they're from outside of the industry, and one of the things I explained to them is I uh, I don't mind being the second call broker, and kind of what I mean about that is. Often from the broker position, uh, we'll get approached by a shipper or we're approaching a shipper and they say, hey, we have X cars to move in, in these lanes. You know, can you give us a quote? And, you know, different brokers go about quoting differently. Um, I can't speak to other brokers. We try to work from the carrier up. So we'll get on the phone. We'll call people in our network, try to secure rates. And what I'm explaining to these interview candidates is that oftentimes our competitors Sometimes the, the other lesser experienced ones, um, or even sometimes the bigger ones, they'll dial the rate down to win the business with the shipper. Because there's oh, a lot man. of shippers out there that just, they're, they're cost driven completely. And the good ones understand transport and understand it's important to have that trustworthy relationship and ultimately to have good, reliable drivers that care about their business and your cars. And, you know, ultimately it boils down to money and relationships, empathy from our end. And so when I said the second call, when, if we're going to bid on something and the, and the shipper comes back and says, you know, I'm sorry, ACI, but you guys were, you know, 
X hundreds of dollars more expensive. You know, we really like to use you guys. You're high quality. We like your technology, whatever the reason may be. Is there anything you can do on the rate? You know, as a courtesy, we'll go one time back to the driver and say, hey, is there anything you can do on the rate? And if the driver say no, then, you know, okay, we're okay saying no to the shipper. I'm sorry. The rate doesn't work for the drivers. Uh, best of luck. And then what usually happens more times than not is I get a call the week later, two weeks later, hey, Aaron, my, my cars didn't move. Is your rate still good? And I have to say, well, let me make some phone calls and check. I don't know. Things could have changed in a week or two. And I call those same drivers back and either they're, you know, in the right place at the right time again and can do it or they can't. And we got to go back and start to source for some new drivers again and get them a new rate. But in that process of trying to secure a good rate for drivers, you know, once we deliver on being that second option and we deliver a good quality service, that's how we win loyalty. And that's how we win trust with both the shippers and the drivers. It's again, just trying to get quality shipments at, at reasonable rates that can take care of drivers. You know, they, they got a business to run too. And that's why I kind of, the more I watch your channel, the more I like it. Uh, we try to be the most driver oriented broker out there. And I specifically, we kind of put our money where our mouth is on that. You know, I don't know too many other brokers that we pay all of our drivers in net seven quick pay terms with no fees. We don't have a net 30 option. We pay everyone in a week. We're hoping to go faster. It happens to be one of our skill sets. We're good at managing the cash flow of our business. So we're able to provide that service. And that was something we did when we started to try to be a competitive advantage. And as we've grown every year, we've doubled in size over year. We've kept that strategically as a, a, a quality of service and something that we feel drivers deserve to not be nickel and dimed on their rate. It's hard enough just to negotiate, you know, let us add some value to the driver by, you know, helping to finance their business a little bit. And, um, you know, in return, I believe we work with a, a really high quality of drivers consistently. Yeah, I agree. Well, and I and the thing is, you said, you said a lot there, and that's the thing is that it's not an it's not a simple answer. And I saw on I, one of the things going through my head right now is one of the things I think holding us back is actually many of the drivers' inability to talk about how we repair several problems. And I know, I mean. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I've been in touch with drivers for most of the time that I've worked in auto transport as a dispatcher. And I agreed, like, brokers this and brokers that, until I realized it's not all the brokers. And actually, some of the drivers are wrong, too. You know, and this was pointed out in a driver um, social media, is that drivers complain about super low rates... And then want all the cheap stuff for their truck. Like cheapest tires, cheapest insurance, cheapest this, cheapest... Well, where does it end? I mean, we all have to realize the value. And to, to get true value, sometimes we have to pay more than the cheapest. We, I think we all fall victim to this problem at times. And so it's not all brokers and it's not all drivers. It's cut rate brokers... And I don't know what the term for the driver, but, but that rate, the, the 29 cent a load s sitting on central all day, that's that cheap crap nobody is taking. And that's the one that gets noticed. The, for, the, the 60 cent a mile car in New Mexico to Arizona, that thing's gone. That's why you don't yeah. see it. You know, yeah. to, to interject a bit, um, it, it is going to just sit on that load board, right? And that's the the benefit of it, right? If you if everybody decides we're going to let this one just sit there, um, there's something to that. And that that broker, if they continue to do that, that's not sustainable. They're probably just not going to be around if people aren't taking those rates. So, you know, that that's going to flush itself out. But you can't let that be the tone of that that 10 percent or that five percent or that one percent can't be um it, what you think about every broker right? right and because it's frustrating it's not and, and the thing is is half of our loads never even see the load boards anymore that, to, exactly it's say that again yeah probably half upwards of, of half or more or never more i would, say, I would say more probably at this point. probably more yeah exactly so the the advice stop 
praying for better rates on load boards and build relationships with people like Aaron and Jesse at ACI Transport. If a carrier called you out of the blue, say, hey, can I work for you guys? Absolutely. We'll get Absolutely. them onboarded. And, you know, we, again, we have some technology with some intelligence and logic behind it. And honestly, all the credit for our technology goes to Gary and our CIO, Nathan. And, um, you know, we'll take what lanes you like to run and we'll send some push notifications to you. Right now it's via email. We're working on yet another phone app right. uh, for drivers, right. but it should have some intelligence to it that if you tell us what kind of lanes you're looking for, when you want to run them, quantity types, you know, we're hoping to build in some logic to make it so that you don't have to filter through a dozen load boards and applications to get through everything. You know, we still got to tackle the problem of how do we get all of our shippers and the industry shippers to kind of consolidate their technology. And we're hoping to maybe address that through um, API code integration and use car week was a great platform to us to start talking mm -hmm. to shippers about that and other it companies and even uh, repossession companies. So, you know, we're looking forward to having those meetings and continuing that conversation. Um, it, it, it's, it's very exciting. I mean, when I started building my book, I'd never done sales before. And when we started the company, I was like, okay, well I'll try sales. And when I first built my book of business, the carriers that got the most volume, I know them by name. I was texting with them daily. And when I got loads, those loads never saw a load board. It was like, hey, Dustin at Transport Auto Group, uh, how, what's your schedule look like this week? Uh, I got whatever you need, Aaron, or um, you know, Bo at JBL uh, over in the uh, shout out over to the uh, Mid-Atlantic region. But you know, for me, a lot it was um, just, you know, building the relationship. And, and to this day, I haven't been a frontline salesperson here for a couple of years now, but I still know all those transporters. I still, you know, I know them, I know their wives, I know their family. I, I want to make sure they're doing well. And, you know, we, we keep all that carrier rating information internally, and we do try to prioritize high quality carriers over the rest of the market. So yeah, we like to avoid load boards when possible. And ideally, we want to have no loads on load boards in the next five years. And, and so just as a carrier, if you're a good carrier and you're a good driver, you expect companies that you've worked with to recognize that and always want you. It's the same yep. thing in brokering. If you have a good carrier, then you, you, you expect that to be back. You expect the, as the broker, the driver to think, yeah, I liked working with that broker. And by the way, I want to address this too. I feel like this is part of the discussion that needs to be addressed is that carriers that say F brokers, you know what? Brokers do do something. Do you know what it's like to educate a customer and get them to actually sign a contract to ship a car? Forget about yes. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I yes, do. I do. <laughs> um, but I mean, you know, that being said too, though, I have personally talked to a lot of drivers that have horror stories about brokers. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've actually had firsthand experience of, of just terrible broker experiences and that actually led to one of the things i'm the most passionate I'm get a about driver email by the way I, what i just said a driver, <laughs> dear jay you don't know i do it all day well i mean to be fair though i mean there's a lot of drivers out there getting taken advantage of it's one of the things that yeah. drives us crazy um when when gary and i we were in my dad's basement with a, a yellow notepad talking about this business we wanted to create and based on our experience with brokers we said okay well, we know all the things we don't want to do. So let's come up with an ownership team that has some core values that are aligned at the very top level that this industry just desperately needs. And we need to put it so forward facing, we're going to put it in the name of our company. And so the, the ACI stands for adaptability, communication, and integrity. And the, there's, there's many, many things that have been created from those core values, but those have been the single most important thing in our business to communicate to both employees, to carriers, all the way up to our shippers. And I have no qualms about explaining to our shippers that this is my order of priority as a business owner. My employees are number one. We cover 100% of health insurance, 50% for dependents. We have retirement plan with matching. We do all sorts of crazy stuff for our employees. They're our biggest asset. So we invest the most time, money, and um, our brain power towards that. 
Second, right underneath our employees is our vendors, and that's the truck drivers out there. That They're the ones physically performing the work. They're the ones putting their bodies and livelihoods at risk to run these vehicles for us. And so it's our responsibility to make sure we take care of them too. Um, and, and then last for us is, is the shippers. The idea being that if our employees are fulfilled and our drivers feel safe and secure working for us and know that we're gonna hold their hand through any problem, our shippers are gonna get a high quality experience. And you know we have an incredibly high retention rate for customers. And I think that stack, which not many other businesses in our industry have that priority. You can tell from the technology, it, everything is designed from the focus of the shipper. And that's why from a technology standpoint, we're trying to do everything from the vantage point of the driver. What is a driver gonna wanna use? What is quick and efficient for them? And yet make, make sure all the, the information is, is you know, heading upstream and downstream easily. Those are the things we're talking about in, in this conference room, trying to figure out, okay, what is an application that drivers want? Not something that shippers want. We're gonna make something that drivers want and then we'll figure out how to get shippers to be okay with that. But I, I'm not aware of too, too many other technologies, if any, that are approaching it in our industry from that vantage point that are connected to all the, the points in the supply chain that a broker is uniquely positioned to touch. Um, and that's something we're actually really excited about. I'd love to come back on your show in a couple months when we're launching the app and, and answer some questions. But um, love to have you back. Kind of, I guess a different topic yeah. altogether. No, I would love to have you back. Well, and it's funny because you know what I'm thinking is, I mean, you're talking about you're you're in fact you're in your offices right now, right? And I talked. Well, to Jesse's you, at home. Or, uh -huh. no, but you're in the office, right? You're in yeah. the office, and and we're, you were talking earlier. I mean, you're talking about salespeople. You're talking about carriers. You're talking about technology. And, you know, a lot of drivers are thinking, I think he just sits around trying to figure out how to drive the rates down. Right? Like, I mean, we have such a yeah. fragmentation in our industry. It is crazy. It'd be yeah. just like the shipper. You know, there's somebody yeah. sitting at home right now who thinks they're going to ship a car or did ship a car. And all they can think is lazy drivers don't do anything. Right? It's crazy. It's why do yeah. we do that? Why do we not think about how much work the other guy has to do? Well, there's, there's, there's such a shroud over everything. If you think, I don't know if, if anybody that's watching has tried to ship their personal vehicle. Now, nobody watching your channel probably has done that um, because right. they would just take it. Yeah, but right. these POV markets are kind of a microcosm, right? You, you send out an email or you, you sign up on some website and then you get 10 emails, right? And then somebody's going to sell you on the idea of shipping the car at a price, and you have no idea what the back end is. It's the same kind of thing, right? So as a broker, I'm going out, we're going out there and we're finding customers to keep drivers busy. Um, we're mitigating some of the risk for our customers, right? So, you know, we still have to be insured. We still have to have all these cost uh, factors as well. Yep. But then we're also paying people faster. There, We have some customers that are, you know, 45, 60 days out. Um, and a lot of these drivers probably can't float 30, 45, 60 days of, of waiting for a payment. So no there, kidding. there is, no there kidding. is another thing right, brokers so, have to deal with. So right, we're some, almost like a pseudo bank in some ways. And that that's yeah. okay. That's a part of our business model. That That's one of the services that we should provide in this supply chain. I, I, absolutely. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's something you have to deal with. It's part of the business yeah. model. And again, this is why there are carrier brokers. Some right. people who have assets and drivers go ahead and do brokering because you're building the customer base. Some companies are just carriers. Some companies are just brokers. It should be just acceptable. You know what you're making me think, too? On the back of the cereal box, all the nutritions and ingredients, I think <laughs> yeah. car shippers need that. Yeah. Right? Sure. It, here's yeah, your yeah. quote, and here's all the crap that went into it. And all we have right now is, uh, you know, central ratings. Easy peasy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Which, no Which we have 100%, land, anyway. by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, man, good for you. That's awesome. <clears throat> no, no, it's, that, it's that's deal. been important to us. Yeah, but, it's a big uh, deal. No, it, it, it is important. It, it, Gary also champions that as well with our ops team. Just, um, again, just, you know, kind of put up or shut up. I think we have like, oh, seven or 800 uh, pieces of feedback, and they're all positive. And, you know, you can't. 
accomplish that as a broker unless you're making sure you're taking care of your carriers financially. I think that's the number one complaint on central Absolutely. For negative feedback on brokers, Absolutely. late payment, not payment. That's right. Um, you know, occasionally we'll have to go back and forth with the carry on a, on a damage claim or mm-hmm. something like that. But as you can tell, we have no negative feedback. We work hard to resolve all those issues. That's a lot. And, that is a lot of work. Cause you know, there are, you know, there are problems, disagreements, complaints, you know, there yeah, are, there and, are, they know, happen. A lot. I'm amazed at other brokerages I've worked at how seemingly there's an unwillingness to to work with carriers on an individual basis when problems do occur. You know, I can think of several incidents where, you know, somehow either a a carrier got hit or they went under a bridge that was a little too low. They ripped the roof off. Um, You know, we've dealt with all sorts of issues. We ship thousands of cars a month. And so... You know, we've had dam- drivers of companies, Aaron, $14,000 in damages. I can't, I don't have that kind of money on me. And if I file a claim, my insurance is going to put me out of business with the premiums next year. Okay. Hey, Mr. Carey, you know, we've done some business together. Let me, I, we have some financing in place. Maybe we can help you out. And we'll come up with a, <laughs> one of my, one of my employees coined this phrase, we'll come up with an unreasonably reasonable payment. <laughs> And mm-hmm. I mean, you know, we, we've awesome. done that. It's just, hey, you need to take four months to pay it off. Cool. I, I, I got your trust. Let's get it done. And more often than not, carriers have come through. And there's a mm-hmm. stigma amongst, amongst brokers that carriers are just out there to kind of screw brokers over. And that's just not the case. They're, these are small business owners, just like us, mm-hmm. trying to do good work. The, the vast majority. I mean, there's bad eggs in every industry. Um, but, you know, for the most part, there's a lot of really good drivers out there, just like there's a lot of good brokers out there. It's just, you know, you got to wade through a lot to get to them sometimes. <laughs> Here's a tough question. What advice yeah. would you give to a carrier that stares at the load boards and prays all day? What would you say? What do you do? You know, a, a lot of that, I think, and I, I'll jump in here, is yeah, go ahead, just. Um, the, the biggest thing is, is that People need to understand that all of these rates ultimately come from the customer, right? The customers have a need. They're going to um, want the rates to be lower. They want to replace brokers with technology. They want auctions and all these things, you know, so there's all these other conversations going on in the background and people are having to bid and, and all of that. So oh, yeah. rates are not going to magically change overnight. There are some things that, that did inflate rates like the ELDs and some of that stuff. Um, but that's just not going to happen potentially. And as more and more technologies come out, it's not going to be some big pendulum swing per se. There might be some increases and to your point, seasonality, but you just have to do the best you can. And we're going to help like string some loads together. Maybe we need to look at it differently. Um, You know, and again, if we're going to make changes to rates, we need to do it as a unified body and we need to have those conversations and kind of come in there to these conferences, right, and and have those conversations. It's not just going to happen just because you wish it to be. We need to enact that change. Uh, and as like a single owner operator, if you're looking, if you're looking tomorrow for some loads, the absolute best thing you can do: take a day, take a week, build a call list of brokers, and uh, just call and don't call with an intention to pick up a specific load. Don't call on one from a load board. Just call them and tell, talk to a dispatcher. Make sure they, they have interest and, and you know, you're having a conversation, but say, hey, I'm so-and-so with this carrier. I have this equipment. I'm always looking for these lanes. Do you guys have anything now or at any time in the year that you, know, that you have that you think I might be a good fit for? And you're gonna go through some dispatchers that are just gonna brush you off. They're gonna take your information, jot yep. it down and yep. put it on a sticky note and it's gonna rot in their desk for a week and then get thrown away. That's gonna happen. Yes. But if you get through enough, you're gonna connect with somebody like on our team, you're gonna connect with Tyler or Clara. And these are people that just, they care. They, they again, employees first, they're here to, to deliver on a product and find fulfillment in their job. And that includes taking care of everyone in our supply chain, the, the driver and the shipper. So just call people. There's some other brokers. I'm not going to name them by name, but I know them and I know they're good at what they do. We're out there, you know, just call around. It is a numbers game, but you will get through to a dispatcher that you resonate with. So get out there just as Jay was saying earlier tonight, 
build those relationships, you know, have some empathy with the other person on the side, on the, uh, with the person on the other side of the phone. Those things are, are super important. If you can walk a mile in a dispatcher or logistics coordinator's shoes and you can relate to them and just kind of put them on a weekly or monthly check-in, you know, take advantage of that. There's brokers out there, even like us, that once you sign up with us, get on board and go through the carrier packets. A lot of them have lane information and a lot of companies have technology like we do that will send you emails of items on our internal load board, things that aren't posted on central or publicly, things that are private. You'll get emails about them and, and they'll fit the criteria that you filled out. And different brokers have different criteria, but you know, if you do that legwork up front and you plan, you'll find a lot of loads coming your way and ideally, it'll make it so that you don't have to work on a load board as much. I mean, we have some drivers that for most of the year, they don't have to work off a load board. We keep mm -hmm. them busy every day, whether it's with single units that we're kind of dragging together for them or whether it's full truckload, they're out there and they're doing good work and they never have to look at Central for a day. Uh, others, you know, they have a different schedule and they want to find something that fits into the routine. And, you know, if you talk to us, we'll keep an eye out. Um, connecting with salespeople as well. Call the sales department. Yes, with one of the sales guys for a minute. You know, pick their brain on what regions they're trying to sell to. Um, I guess really, if I had to boil it down, it's just pick up the phone and talk to people to, and, and see what's going on out there. Yeah, to, to add to that really quick. Um, as Aaron said, <laughs> you know, I, I come from hotels, right? And so that there's this uh, sort of Ritz-Carlton thinking and I, we've adapted it, which is that every single person you talk to is a guest Okay, but the idea is every single person is a customer that you talk to. So I would encourage everybody that's out there, whether they're brokers or shippers or transporters or whatever you're doing, just remember every single person you interact with affects your money in some way, right? So let's say you absolutely hate picking up at repo yards because they're only open Tuesday from 9 to 10 and they're, they, they're never going to help you. Remember, if you're terrible to that person, then you're never picking up from there again and you just mess up your revenue stream. Um, brokers, we are your customers in a manner of speaking, just the way that we need to treat you well, because if you don't pick up the cars, I don't have a business. So we, we need each other. And so try and remember that everybody affects your money and just go in there with that mindset. You know, you made me think of a couple of things. One is when you, when you, when you travel or you deal with somebody in a different business, you're able to analyze their business from a totally new perspective. So sometimes like, you know, getting out of your normal routine can be helpful or just even within your routine. Yeah. Think about the, you're getting your tire changed. Think about the guy that changes the tire or yeah, you're paying mm -hmm. your, you're paying your waitress bill. Think about the waitress. Um, it is really interesting in that, uh, we get, we get so stuck and we stop thinking of how to break out of our own box and, and improve our lives in whatever direction that is. I can't help but think, I mean, white guys are talking. I think of so many negative comments that I read about uh, brokers or just other people that are trying something new or all the people they've talked to that said you can get rich or you can make so much money a day. And it's just so crazy. I, I don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm I'm going to drop a little bit of knowledge here. And this was something I actually learned from Jesse and Gary. They're both from hospitality. They know how to deal with people face to face. My previous experience was working in a little basement office, you know, pouring over financial statements. And uh, when I started out, uh, my interactions with drivers were very, um, the right word might be uh, reactive, right? I was taking in whatever energy they had and I was reacting with that same kind of energy. And what I learned from this kind of hospitality mindset, and I think this is something that not only could benefit drivers, but really anybody in a business environment and, and you want to get the most out of it, which is just smother other people in kindness. I mean, it's, it's, you have to be kind of a broken human to continue to be mean to someone that's being nothing but nice to you, right? <laughs> and so that that's was awesome. a change that I made a couple of years ago. And I, I love the challenge of taking a phone call, whether it's from a shipper or, or a carrier and, and they're upset, whether it's reasonable or unreasonable, I'm here to empathize with them, be as nice as possible and try to help them solve whatever the problem is. And I've, I've just, I've heard it now so many times and Jesse and Gary actually, you know, comm I commend them for their front desk time at the hotels where, you know, people were face to face having these um, elevated conversations. 
But, Mm -hmm. you know, so many times I'm taking a call with somebody that's heated. And by the end of the call, we're calm. We, we got a call to action and, and boom, we're ready to get back to business and start executing and making money. So, you, you know, know that, that's been one piece of advice that's been great. Uh, produce a lot of results for me, at least. Well, the fact is, like, personally, I, I, I don't like the killing him with kindness talk, but I do like to be killed with kindness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, well, the trick so, is it has to be genuine. Yeah, you have to that's it. Your- that's that's the trick yeah. and you know it, it's just it's a mindset thing and and when you when you become mindful and, and aware of that it really goes a long way with you well and that's another thing too a lot of these negative comments i've read so many negative comments i'm just inundated with comments that i've read i, I gotta i gotta stop looking at those facebook pages full of just negative comments <laughs> i can't help it though it's fascinating it seems to just it it's like a it's like this jack and the beanstalk that's grown through our industry just be negative be negative you'll it's almost like you'll make money by being negative um and um gosh i lost my train of thought because i was was thinking of some of these comments but uh i know that i know a lot of these negative commenters they're good people in their own circles but but again when faceless just nasty it's just like really (laughs) i can't be right I know you're nice when you deliver that car, but take to the internet and it's daggers. It's crazy. I mean, it, right. It's like the same thing with road rage, right? If I'm walking next to someone in a, a grocery store and we bump into each other, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, excuse me. Right. But, you know, if we're on the highway and I'm trying to merge and someone isn't letting me in, all of a sudden, I'm, you know, I'm feeling a way about that. But yeah. you know, it's right. So, it's something about it. Anything that takes the the human to human element out of the interaction, I think, just comes along with that increased negativity. At least that, that seems to be one of the issues with kind of social media uh, today. But I don't I don't claim to be a social media expert. So like I, I get that. I, I feel like I feel like if I was more negative, I'd have more views. Oh <laughs> yeah, no, he's just positive. Yeah. Again. But then again, maybe we just killed somebody with kindness. Maybe somebody just died with kindness. <laughs> yeah may, maybe i mean you know it, it's it but it all kind of boils down in a, in a sense right so that we have this concept of and it might be freight before auto but you know is everything going to go automated or can a technology replace a person and i just don't think that's possible because we're so shifting back to this boutique you know we're shifting back to a boutique mindset where we want high quality stuff even if we have to pay for it we're also you can't just ignore the human element and if you need to check a, you need, you need to call a driver or understand what's going on, or to your point, get an education, you just can't do that with a computer and it's going to be a while before we see that happen. So, you know, there, technology is, to your point, an excellent tool. It's going to continue to drive us to all be more efficient and hopefully be better and maybe make more money or make it in a different way. But it's it's not ever going to replace uh, personal attitude or entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, spirit and Aaron's amazing at that. He's always looking for the next thing, and um, so that's that's why you know we have the heads of shifts that that we have. Well, and to jump on that real quick, this was a, a point Gary made to me a while ago, and I, I found it very insightful. Speaking about technology and the human element involved, we obviously all see the world and and business changing towards technology to remove more of the human element. And in a lot of ways, there's a lot of logic to it. Why, why should I staff a human or be a person that's doing data entry, right? That seems like a good place to insert some technology. But as we see technology increase and these applications creating a more faceless experience, the argument is that the value of the human to human interaction when there is a problem is becoming exponentially more and more valuable. Amen. And I happen to like representative, the thought right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If I can't get some, and I don't care what it is. If I, yeah. I've got, I, yeah, I, if I can't get somebody on a phone in about five seconds, I, I'm done. Yeah. I, I want somebody on the phone, and yeah. if it's a live yeah. chat, that I'm good with that. I just want and, um, individual interaction. Yeah. yeah. And I've heard the argument other people have made, well, we're going to create artificial intelligence and AI to replace that human element on the phone. And my thought process to that is, okay, well, let's just say for argument's sake, there's an AI that could answer all your questions the exact same way I could, right? And they could 
emulate the tone of my voice that that sounds like empathy and do it exactly. But if the person calling in knows it's a computer, ruins the whole experience. I agree. You got to know it's a real human and it's it's just it's got to be a real experience. And that's going to become more and more valuable as these years go on. Believe me. And as we see that we don't have to redo a, a menial task over and over and over. This is where we're like technology. Thank you. Right. Yes. Absolutely. So many yep. things that are automated and we don't even realize it anymore, but there's a mm -hmm. lot of minor simplifications and we just, we don't notice cause we're just always moving so fast. So automation in itself is not the worst thing ever. Right. It's just that there's a, there's, there are thresholds. <laughs> Well, and you can definitely think, I'm not going to name any names, but I think you can see a lot of examples in the current business landscape of companies that are leaning too hard into the technology model and removing that human element. And I mean, I, I think you can see the ramifications from it if, if you're taking a look at the market these days. And we're going to see that pendulum start to swing back the other way, which will be, uh, hopefully we're going to be ahead of the curve on that one. <laughs> That's so. So, um... It seemed like there was a couple other things that we were going to hit upon. I know it's getting late. I know I want to let you go soon. What uh, do, you, do you have any, I don't know, do you have any exciting news? There was something. Oh, you know what I was going to say? Yeah. I'm looking forward to uh, somebody I, I, made, I, made, I, made, I made some new friends, made many new friends recently, but a couple independently said the same topic, and that was the lead generator. The lead mm. generator stuff, and the more I think about it, the days of the same old, same old lead generator stuff, I don't know if those days are numbered, but I think the years are numbered. This practice of, you, you guys ever do this just for kicks? It's, you know, we, oh, you, go ahead. you type in, go to Google right now. And I mean this, everybody go to Google, like don't shut the show down, do it on your other computer. <laughs> second okay. monitor yeah, you yeah. go to google and you type in cheap car shipping fine car shipping cheap auto transport and you see the same companies come up i mean it mm -hmm. doesn't matter what you type in yeah and and half of those results are the same company yep and then it goes to a lead gen company who's then going to sell it to 10 brokers to compete on or more it's funny we we Your experimented with that. Crazy. Yes. Yep. When we just started in 2016, we bought a bunch of leads. We're like, I don't know how to get customers. Let's buy some leads. Right. And Same thing like praying for rates. Buying exactly. Of leads. And we just found it. We spent one month doing it. We're like, this ain't the way to oh, go it's about garbage. it. Garbage. Um, you know. So that that's been something we had I mean, consistently. Not all of it, but you know what from. I mean. You. Well, yeah. You, no. It's you talk to angry people that don't book with you well, anyways. Because they just they're getting ten phone calls within five minutes of filling out this form, web form. I mean, I actually got the same experience as a business owner. I will never go online looking for a quote for a commercial copier ever again. Because it was the <laughs> experience that these people are going when they want to ship their car. Right, and it's pretty aggressive to say the least. Dental insurance. We we were we were laughing yeah. about what other industries have this problem. There's many right, right. actually insurance um i don't know I, I don't have the i want to create that list but right because just go through the list of and that's another thing so think of all the industries that could benefit from a new type of this kind of searching this complacent searching on google thinking you're going to get a quick answer it's not no that's going to change it has to change yeah, I mean, you know, we just recently started kind of exploring that space again. And it has been interesting because looking at it today from 2016, the landscape is different on these lead gen sites. When you go and Google ship my car and, uh, you know, car haul now or whatever, you know, the same old websites aren't showing up anymore. There's different players out there. There's mm -hmm. some, you know, brokers that are paying for advertisements. Um, you know, social media is a big game changer now. People are doing a lot more work and, and trying to communicate with companies through social media. So I do think it's changing. And, you know, after 
working with a couple of these lead gen type companies, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not convinced that it's the future. <laughs> no, it's not. No. And so what I can't help but wonder is there are still, there are hundreds, if not thousands of car shipping businesses, business owners, business development people, co-owners that are not seeking any of the new information we talked about tonight. And they're going to wake up tomorrow and they're going to pray for the rates to go up. They're going to do it again after Thanksgiving. They're going to do it after Christmas. Why? You know, it, it's possible that they, they came, from, you know, it, it's as humans, we want to go back to what was level, right? Like it, it, we do don't everybody. We? Yeah. So, you know, you think about when were you the most fit in your life? When to make and Carmel you, and great again. Well, yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe not quite that crazy, but <laughs> I mean, it's the same. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's like, I want to go back to my college weight and like, I was, I had like, all this extra time. Right. So you know, for me, I want to get bigger and not smaller, but you know, I have the inverse problem of most Americans. But, you know, at the end of the day, everybody wants it to go back to that, right? Because it was that at one point. And, and honestly, they're not wrong for wanting that. Um, I think we all yeah. want to make more money. Right. Um, but, you know, what can you do in the interim if you're going to, you know, pay for a personal trainer or, you know, just or talk to a broker? You know, it's the same kind of thing. Let somebody help you if you don't want to sit there and, and find leads and generate leads and go to uh, these conventions and try and get in front of people. And, and, you know, if you're looking for not per se a shortcut, but an alternative, uh, brokers are potentially a good way to do that. Also just getting your name out there. I mean, it, it's tough because we generate all of our own leads for B2B stuff. Um, not so much the, the POV things, which is why uh, Aaron mentioned we're looking into that, that platform again, but you know, it, there's so many people already transporting cars with someone. So they're not necessarily looking for you. So you have to go find them. Well, and Jay, you said it best earlier. Uh, you know, people just have to embrace the change because yeah. the world and the industry is definitely changing with or without you. And, you know, if you want to reap the rewards of it, then you really got to embrace the change and you got to be somewhat forward thinking. Well, and, uh, put yourself out there. And here's the thing is, and I tell you, it, it seemed like, yeah, Right. We, there's a, there's gotta be a way to, to bring back whatever it was that we wanted, you know, well, the, the team will win next year and all this stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. but like, I'll tell you, I was just watching some YouTube news earlier today. Oh my gosh. Some of the changes happening now in just other industries or things that we thought might change a little bit, things are changing so much, so fast that I, I, I just, I have to now just talk about it. I just, I have to. And actually, that's why this show has changed a lot in two years. Just this show about car shipping. But I know it, it, it has to. Because everything's yeah. changing. Your viewership included, right? That was something that you and I talked about. Everything, yes. I know there are people that two years ago... They signed up to, to watch a show, I guess, about a guy booking loads. And that that's not happening now, so I'm not going to watch. And I, that's fine. But we all the point is we all have to pivot. Mm -hmm. Every single one of us. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, we're, we're trying to, and uh, really our focus is, and uh, our team is, you know, we right now we're doing auto transport, and uh, there will be some other things, and we're looking at technology and in-house development, but we're trying to pivot preemptively, right? That, that's right. how we're trying to exactly. be ahead of things is not wait till it went away. We're trying to do that ahead of time. And we're trying to bring all of these people along with us while making jobs and also making sure our vendors get taken care of too. So, yes. you know, it's, it's about trying to stay in front of it and not just get run over by it. And I'm, I'm pivoting in ways I don't even talk about yet. Like, I've, because I believe that's the future of successful business is I'm doing something, I'm working on a few things behind the scenes. Nobody even knows about because everything's changing so fast. You know, I'll tell you what we all agree on is we all love how Wayne Gretzky said, 
It's not where the puck is. It's where it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Wise That's words. True. Yeah. <laughs> From Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. I never I mean, quote Wayne, Wayne Gretzky, ever. <laughs> well, we're, you know, we're from Michigan. One in so there. Yeah, we're, 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 from, we're from Michigan. Yeah, we're, we're right. pretty big uh, <laughs> hockey uh, state. So. Hockey town. Yeah. So what we got to do then, okay, so our mission, and because, I mean, I really, really appreciate you guys coming on tonight. Um, and this happened. I'll let everybody know. This happened because you got, I, first, I, I said hello to you at Used Car Week. Then you replied, was that yesterday? Uh, yeah, well, I reached, yeah, I reached out. We got Wait, back. We email yesterday, yeah. Yep. And now you're here right now. That's how fast things have to change to make progress. And I really, really appreciate you guys being a part of that. And so what I want to do is, yeah, I'm going to have you back on next year at some point when we'll give it enough time. And then when you have some kind of a milestone or announcement or something amazing you guys will help me figure that out, and then you'll be back, and this will be like, yeah, remember in the 80s when we were on your show? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, no, but I'm looking forward to it. I mean, it's uh, it's crazy what relationships can occur just by meeting someone face-to-face, and, and that, that's the biggest part of these conventions is why it's important to get out there. And uh, so, you know, we're not going to squander any relationship, which is why we appreciate you having us on and, and uh, looking forward to that next discussion, too. Thank you. You know, and I know it's all about niche. That's why I don't I don't I'm not I don't expect a thousand people to tune in at a time because that's not it's just not how it is. It's these smaller groups with high impact. And I mean, that sums it up. This wasn't the biggest show in the world, but man, the people there we're getting major juice out of what was happening that day. It's the, awesome. the conference space was so big and so nice. Oh it almost God. made the event seem smaller than it Did was. It, yeah. Right. It was, <laughs> especially, do you remember like at the beginning of each day, I don't know what time, <coughs> excuse me. I don't know what time you guys got there, but I sat in, <laughs> I mean, it was a huge room and Bill's yeah. on the microphone with this great setup. And I mean, empty chairs all over the place. And I'm sitting there yeah. thinking, man, there's a lot of people missing out. But that's fine. That's fine. I'm here. Thank you, Bill. Right? So it's a thousand attendees, uh, give or take, throughout the week, you know. It's, it's a good uh, show. I mean, it's, yeah. they put on an amazing show. That's why, you know, it's good. we're lucky. Because when that place, in five years, when that place is just packed, we'll be like, man, we were there. I remember, <laughs> I remember when I used to be able to get to the – whatever you know and without a yeah. but i tell you when we when we sat down to eat that place was packed yep everyone shows up for the food everyone right, shows- right. <laughs> and, and yep. the expo hall when it was when yeah. it was cocktail reception time that place was packed that yep. was awesome it really was it was a great show man so i'm so glad i got to meet you guys at the show yeah jay thank, thank you so much for having us we're definitely going to stay in touch you know to your viewers if you guys have any questions if you want to pick our brain on shipping you need some help with your business we got a wide variety of experience here feel free to call us just call our main line ask, ask for aaron ask for jesse what's the number the, uh, my direct line is uh 248 607 seven six four two the main line just switched the last digit to a zero but feel free to call me if if any of you drivers out there want to talk some shop uh you want to get onboarded into our system you know we're exploring right now we're actually under contract to get a new building a facility that we'll own and you know we want to uh create a kind of a secure gated lot there and we're looking into getting some trucks and possibly uh you know either leasing trucks to drivers or just working with owner operators, helping them through the process. We're going to be exploring the asset based territory uh, for the same reasons we got into the brokerages. We feel like our core values are kind of missing and, uh, and that certainly if they're not missing, the industry could use more of it. Yes. And we just feel like we'd be a great fit for drivers. And we're looking forward to offering all the same benefits that we have for our current employees to any full-time driver that we have. And you know, just want to make sure we continue to, to build our community and, and do good work. And, um, Again, Jay, thanks for having us and letting us spread our message. Let me say it's 248-607-7640 is the main number. And what's a good, like, catch-all email? Like, um, So if you want to get to our operations team, if you're a driver, the, yes. the best is going to be operations at acitransport.com. 
Perfect. Okay, I just put that in there. Perfect. Because if you're a carrier, that's who you want to talk to. Operations yep. at acitransport.com. Yep. Awesome. Excellent. Yeah, feel free to call any of our dispatchers and just, you know, yeah, get a bug in their ear. Hey, this is where I run. This is what I'm looking for. And they will keep an eye out for you. Fill out our carrier packet. We'll take your lane information, your equipment type, any preferences. And we're building that into our technology now so you guys can get loads that aren't on load boards. And hopefully they match up with the lanes that you want to run when you want to run them. And if they're not, let us know and we'll work on it. As you said, half of your loads don't hit the load board. Think of all the brokers. If that's true of all brokers, which it could be, think that that's and that's the good half right yeah i think it depends based on my experience but you, you do have a lot of them out there that are able to build those relationships and not not rely on load boards build yep. relationships man thank yep. you guys so much for your time tonight for coming on the show thank you jay appreciate it all right thanks, you guys jay. have a great night thank you thanks you too. all right peace bye all right man unbelievable Okay, so now let's do this. Uh, let's do this. I oh, know where. What is going on here? By the way, yes, I made a couple changes. Uh, different shirt, no hat. Um, that I did. Oh, also, yeah. Hey, I want to do this. Let's do. Um, let's go to. I want to show next week. Excited to have, I'm going to have John from driveitaway.com vehicle subscription. He is going to blow your mind with vehicle subscription information. It was in my list of changes coming down the pipe. It matters because if vehicle subscription replaces a significant percentage of vehicle ownership, does this affect vehicle shipping? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. I would say probably. But in what ways? Just with your simple customers? Will this be... Does this get into rental? Anyways, John is going to be here to talk about it a lot. Tuesday night, we're going to do a full interview and then open that into a panel discussion. Listen, if you join me tonight or if you're watching afterwards... I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Oh, cool. Text from Aaron. Uh, you can you can email Aaron Friedman, A Friedman at ACITransport.com if you want to get in touch. Thank you, Aaron. That's awesome. I really appreciate that. Um, also, I want to say this too. If there are any rocky moments where, you know, like, hey, what's going on, Jay? Didn't, you know, didn't pass the baton very well or technical issue. It happens. It's still a rather young channel. I'm at two and a half years now. I've been going live for over two years straight every Tuesday night. Tonight's show was actually episode 112. Next Tuesday night is episode 113, Tuesday nights in a row. Yes, I'm going to go into Tuesday night. New Year's Eve is a Tuesday night. New, uh, Christmas Eve is a Tuesday night. So those will be interesting shows. Also, we have Superflow Systems coming up in two weeks. I think that's two weeks. Man, we're already halfway through November. Um, accident Plan is also coming up in December. Um, we're going to have the prom dance coming up. What in the world is that, Jay? Yeah, it's going to get a little bit crazy. I'm going to keep it a little bit crazy because I'm Jay at Auto Transport Intel. And I, uh, I, like, to, I, you know, I like to keep the content fresh and reflective of all the changes happening. I know this show isn't for everybody. Listen, if you want to argue Dodge, Chevy versus Ram, there are other channels to go to. If you never want to break outside of the, the driver box and just be a company driver and you've been one forever and you don't want to listen to a guy that wasn't a driver, there are other channels for you. But if you want to grow your business, understand this industry, there is no other place to go. This is the Car Shipping Business Channel. I'm Jay at Auto Transport Intel. I created this for all of us. I am a media and marketing guy, and I've put all my chips on the car shipping business niche because it's really big. It's really important. Logistics is critical. 
People love their vehicles. They need their vehicles. It's how so many people get work done. And being a car hauler is hard. I can tell you, every show I've been to, when you talk to somebody one-on-one, -on -one, that faceless executive that seems like all he cares about is dollar bills, you know, that guy knows that being a car hauler is hard. So if you think that the only way to get driver appreciation is to talk to other drivers, it's not true. There are people in other silos of this fragmented industry that actually do care. When you sit around and pray for better rates on load boards full of leftovers, yeah, you're probably going to find people that aren't really thinking about your business, your success, your life, your family, your safety, just trying to make a buck. I'm not speaking for people that I don't know, but it sure does seem that way. And when we see each other, when we get to meet each other and talk to each other, that's when we find out what community is really about. You guys know this. So be good to each other. Be safe out there. Thank you for joining me for another Tuesday night. I sure do appreciate it. Appreciate you guys in the live chat so much for keeping it lively and real. And if you don't make it live, no problem. Please watch on demand. Even if you only get a few minutes in here and there or check me out on social media, please do say hello. And if I'm late in replying to you, I apologize. So much keeps me busy, but I, I do get back. Send me an email, put a comment in YouTube, and I'll see you next Tuesday night, guys. Thank you so much. Be safe. Thanks, and I'll see you Tuesday. Peace.